What's up, candy lickers? Pleased to meet you. Nice to know me. What you doing? Listen to the Casio's gut. Hey, Cap, look at me. Let's burn down the school with gasoline. Say, hell yeah. Welcome back into another episode of Casio's Cut. Thanks everybody for interacting. Make sure you follow us on all the social media at Casio's Cut. C A S I O S C U T. That's on the old Instagram. That's on the old Twitter, and that's Facebook as well. Casio's Cut on all the social media. My personal one is the Casio Kid. That's only one S. Don't put the extra ass in Casio. It's T H E C A S I O K I D. And make sure you follow us there. If you want to follow me, of course, on the radio station at the Rocket 951 in Huntsville. Shout out to the Rocket for all their support of the podcast. So I got to give them the love back. Uh, Also, make sure you are getting your packages in. We are so close uh, to uh, unveiling our first video of unwrapping Casio's box. That's right. Unwrapping Casio's box. You can mail anything you want to the Casio's Cut P.O. box. We're going to put that on the pod. We're going to put it on a YouTube video as well. Uh, So you can send anything you want. As long as it'll get to the post office, it'll be on the segment. It's that easy. If you want to do that, write this address down. Casio's Cut P.O. box 19065. That's Huntsville, Alabama, 35804. That's Casio's Cut at P.O. Box 19065. Huntsville, Alabama, 35804. And you can get me all that info. That's up on our social media as well. That address, if you are driving around, don't have time to write it down. Thanks, everybody, for all the love on the past few episodes. The Morning Show Madness. Uh, Thanks for the love on... Uh, my episode with my dad, it's always, uh, you always kind of tense up when you're putting, exposing your family out to the world, but you guys enjoyed the ramblings of Mike Mitchell, the wild man from Alabama. So, uh, I appreciate all the love for that. He had a blast. His only quote the next time I talked to him was, you ought to be ashamed putting a 70 year old drunk man on a podcast, even though he doesn't really know where it's at and how to find it, but he did listen to it had a blast and said those stories were funny, even though he doesn't remember telling them. So we had a blast. So thank you. There'll definitely be a part two, uh, sometime down the road, I'll get him to sit down and hold the microphone again or get big booty Judy to hold it. And we'll have a good time over some drinks, uh, today. Very excited. I got to meet these guys. I've usually met everybody that's been on the podcast. I knew, uh, I met most of them, if not all of them before we actually recorded, but these guys, I knew of them. I listen to their music. The Quaker City Nighthawks, uh, Fort Worth band. Uh, now some of them are still in Fort Worth. Some of them live in Nashville. And that's where I got a chance to hang out with uh, two of the guys from Quaker City Nighthawks. I drove up to Nashville, went to their record label, Lightning Rod Records. Uh, shout out to Logan and everybody there for uh, helping set this up. Uh, Logan, a fan of uh, the Tony Schiavone podcast and a big wrestling fan. We've even got, we've even got video we're going to put up, put up uh, after you listen to this of me and Aaron, the drummer of Quaker City Nighthawks, opening WCW trading cards from back in the day. Our, our buddy Logan had a box and let us each open a pack, and we'll go through it on the video. So make sure you check that out as well as soon as it is up. The Quaker City Nighthawks rock and roll band. They are bringing it, son, and uh, I'm a huge fan, huge, huge fan. They've been uh, on Casio's Cut, which is my daily song that I post out on social media and on the radio, hashtag Casio's Cut. You can see all those songs I put, but they've been on there a couple times, and that's how this all started, and luckily got to sit down with these guys. Hope you enjoy them, and hope you enjoy their music, and check it out after you listen to this episode.
All right, I'm here with uh, David and Aaron. Just so if they're listening to the podcast, the Quaker City Nighthawks, introduce yourself so they can memorize your voice to their foreheads. Here we go. Okay, absolutely. This is uh, David Matzler. Oh, Aaron Haynes. How y'all David, doing? tell them what you do for the Quaker City Nighthawks. I carry amplifiers. <laughs> I've and, got uh, two of the roadies today. They're yeah. going to tell me about the band. <laughs> yeah, right. We don't have any roadies. Everybody knows better than that. <laughs> uh, I play guitar and sing as well. And uh, I play drums and, you know, general sense of debauchery. Debauchery? Well, well sure. Just uh, a general sense. So let's let everybody know we are live. This is your record label building, right? That's right, yes. So Lightning Rod are, Records. There's some, uh, there's some important people here. It's what they tell us. And we're drinking in one of the offices. That's what they tell us. That's how us. much yeah. clout you guys have here. That's good stuff. I think they locked us in here. So. <laughs> they yeah. tell us to pull a blind. We have clout whether we want it or not. I brought you, uh, I brought you some uh, Alabama whiskey, some Clyde Mays, Koneka Ridge. You know, that's where they make Koneka sausage. No, I, have you I, had Koneka sausage? I have not. I was hoping that was the second half of the podcast. <laughs> As a We're matter of fact, like a lot of smoked sausage yeah. here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> a big plate of sausage. Yeah, that's, uh, that's good stuff. So we're we're drinking some whiskey. We're at the record label. Uh, we should tell everybody, you guys. Um, well, I guess rock and roll band is that the easiest way? That's, rock and roll band. That's one of the easiest ways. Yeah, yeah I think so. for sure. Um, and I think uh, if you're on Spotify, you're supposed to be on a specific playlist, and yeah. you guys are mm-hmm. on about seven of them. I yeah. figured out. Yep. It kind of varied. Uh, um, and if you listen to your music. Um, you could hear like different, like almost different bands. Like if you didn't know you guys were the same band, if you listen to basically the last one, uh, QCNH. Did I say that right? If I yeah. yep. nailed shots. it, nailed it. Um, a lot of the songs sound completely different. Is that on purpose? Is that what's happening here? What's happening there is that I have musical ADD. <laughs> And so some weeks I want to be John Denver. And some weeks I want to be, you know, in a stoner metal band. And so it just varies. It, it really, and like, I'll have these ideas where it's like, man, we could all write a bunch of songs like this. And I've learned as I got older that that's just part of the process of writing. Like, I don't have to think about changing the course of our sound each right. time I write a different song, which is nice. Some bands, you know, you'd have to make that decision. But we can kind of just write whatever we're, you know, music we're listening to or all enjoying, you know. Yeah, if we, if we were making like a... You know, big radio record. They'd want every song to sound exactly like the hit song right. on the record. Yeah. But we don't have that problem, thankfully and not thankfully. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I so, mean, you won't be opposed to radio hit totally. eventually, yeah, but right yeah. now, yeah. it's but fun. It, it's, yeah, everybody in the band has a lot of different influences. And, you know, even if a song comes in, like, you know, David might, might write a song and it comes in one way. Once the band takes a hold of it, it might take on a little different idea or a little different life and for sure it's like we're just gonna we're gonna make a record and be done with it and then we're gonna make another record and make another one and yeah it's for that time it's the it's the moment we were making it that's what happened yeah and i think you know we've i've spoken with sam about that before and sam and i split songwriting stuff so i was just sam speaking. is uh, for everybody listening he plays guitar and sings also we trade off lead vocals him and yep. i but um he is not here he is not not present but thanks, um, <laughs> thanks sam yeah what's up sam <laughs> But um, he's mentioned that. We've talked about that before, how, you know, it really just depends on, like, one day when you sit down to write a song, you don't know, you know, maybe you're mad, maybe you're sad, maybe you're, you know, whatever in, in between. But uh, you really, if you just don't think about it too much, you can kind of be surprised how varied the stuff that comes out can be. So he's mentioned to me that we both have that same experience when it comes to writing. So so you guys have been a band 10 years? Yep. So about a decade. started Some when you were seven? Fashion. Yep. All right. Yeah. Uh, young teenagers here, band. Yeah. We're all uh, young and thin since you haven't seen us. So yeah. how? <laughs> it's the most handsome three people in this record label building. I can tell you that. Um, so how do you not hate each other yet? I mean, you 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 do at times, but okay. you don't. But it's not it's not like it's not real hate. Like it's like that brotherly kind of yeah, hate yeah. where you know somebody might do something to get on your nerves, and you realize it's either you you quit. Or they quit, or you figure it out, right? Or you know, you just live in and denial. And ten years in, you're like, guys, time. we got a lot invested in this. this yeah, isn't, that's it. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's like what's what's more important, like getting over yourself, and, or leaving behind the last decade of time. And it's almost always, at least it has been for us, like just get over whatever you're mad at and figure it out. Because um, 
you know, a couple a couple friends of mine are in bands, have been in bands, and um, being a comedian, I used to travel more with some of my buddies that were bands, you know, and I'd have time off and and go, hey, let me hit the road with you and jump in the jump in the uh, tour bus and or the van and go cross country, and I don't think people realize how much time i mean it's 24 7 you're spending with three or four other dudes usually if it's a you know normal band yeah. three or four other guys and literally from the time you wake up to the time you pass out it's the same dudes non-stop yep yeah. all the time so yeah. you get tired of people's faces yeah well it's, you know you know aaron, how to push each other's buttons yeah aaron said it best and it really is a sib it's just like siblings you know what I mean? It's like having siblings. And at this point, we pretty much have a bond that to me is very similar to like, you know, how siblings interact with each other. But you can drive each other crazy, but what do you, I mean, you don't have a choice. What are you going to do? Walk home what, in the middle I mean, of it? You know, like, you just got to <laughs> suck it up and get back in the van but, and so you know, like not be of, mad or, you know, get whatever. You know. Some of the, some of the, the bigger, the huge names, you're like, how did they ever, you know, like Bon Jovi and Richie Sambora are in the middle of a cat fight right now. Yeah. And you're like, Guys, y'all are going to the Hall of Fame. Y'all, y'all might want to suck it up yeah, here. Yeah. And they're like, nah, you have nah enough, we're not playing. You, you have enough money to travel separately. <laughs> yeah, that's what <laughs> you, they have. You right. have money and people. You don't have to Let's see, go different tour buses. You don't yeah. have to see each other <laughs> except for the hour and a half, two hours you're on stage. And other than that, like your lives are totally separate. Yeah, they have stunt doubles go to sound check for them. <laughs> yes, you know, guys with the bandana on. That's and not even real scarf, life. Like, you know? If you're mad at each other and you're living that kind of life, like you suck. Yeah, you don't, that's you easy. Don't understand <laughs> they see each yeah. other for 15 songs yeah, exactly. that's that's it. Yeah. and yeah. go home. Yeah. And they're on the other tour bus and let's yeah. go to the next And they're on autopilot. Pilot. It's not like they're like nobody wants to hear the new music of Bon Jovi. Like, <laughs> sorry, sorry, John, but nobody <laughs> cares. Speak for yourself, sir. <laughs> I'm just I've been saying. Waiting on it. You, yeah. it's like, slippery one wet dose. They've been like, <laughs> <laughs> slippery, slippery one wet again. Slipperier, slipperierly, slipperierer. Yeah, that's good bourbon. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like those guys. That's that's not even real. Like when I hear about like ultra bands that are fighting, like fuck that. Yeah. Like you guys. <laughs> I know you fought all the way to get there and you dealt with it then. And now I have to hear about it, like yeah, or yeah. read about it or something like a, there's a, like a dust up in Bon Jovi or whoever. <laughs> I don't want to keep picking on Bon Jovi, but who cares? Right. I just, and, then, cares. and then also yeah. people, folks, like the, Come on. folks like that, they're, you know, the quotes they're making about it. They're, it's from a bus with their names airbrushed on the <laughs> yeah. side, all individually. You know, it's like, how tough could it be? He's like, I don't like the way he talks to me. I'm sitting here in my, you know, half a million dollar bus with right. all my dogs. Yeah. Well, don't talk to him. <laughs> yeah, just don't. Yeah, you're only going to see him 20 minutes a day, you know? You guys are waking up, eating some brunch together, and going to the show. Yep. Huh? I mean... Usually it's eating brunch at a gas station and, yeah. you know, getting some rollers from... All right, well, Loves. here's my next question. What's your favorite gas station Ooh, food? Ooh, that's... A that's a really hard question. I used to go to the tornadoes. Yeah. You know yeah. the tornadoes, the roller yeah. food? Okay. Those were my jam when I was on the comedy road. Yeah. But now now all of it's gonna tear your ass up. But it's it's all bad. But there's some better bad. Yeah. I think what are you, it, it are you sticking with. Are you going with the roller food or are you going what you know? we we try not to I tr really. Yeah. yeah. I that's mean, a, but you that's you, a desperate move. You will though. <laughs> yeah. It happens. <laughs> but it's a desperate it is, move. But, but you will get desperate. Yeah. yeah. You're just so hungry. You're like, I'm gonna eat one of those weird, weird things. When you're in <laughs> like I feel like when you're on either coast, no matter where you're at, whatever whatever gas station you're at, it's better. There's For like sure. more, there's more options. Like okay. even, even more rollers. Like you have like 15 <laughs> rollers, more rollers, right? I'm more I mean, like, look you at might, all these rollers. You might, get like, you might get like a pepperoni and cheese and a chicken tortilla. When you're in like the middle of the country, you might get like a burnt hot dog and you know, like some, some kind of roller that's just rock hard. And yeah. you don't even know what it is. Just a, it's meat. It's yeah, meat roller. Meat What's so, wrong with rock hard meat? Man. I think that's the goal in life. Yeah, rock hard meat. So I you're about an hour away from eating it <laughs> afterwards, and you're just like, "Why have I ruined my life?" Yeah, makes your head hurt. So if they're on the road and they want to meet the Nighthawks, where is there a fast food joint you usually hit? If you're not eating gas station food, what are you doing? See, the thing is, is we usually just are hauling ass to the next gig. So we try not to lose any time by stopping unless you're we just in have van to mode. Van exactly. mode. You don't have van the Prevost out back. No not way. No. Uh -huh. So you're in the van mode. Yeah. So. I've heard uh, many bands talk about it. They go, "Hey, we're partying afterwards." You're like, N "No, we got a ten hour drive to the exactly, next." Exactly. Yeah. That's Usually it. Yeah. It's like we're going home or to home being the hotel for the <laughs> yeah, night. Yeah, taking a nap. Yeah. 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 Try like, to catch up. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna go. We're gonna have two rooms because we travel light. It's only four of us going. 
um, we're gonna everybody's gonna get in the room and they're immediately gonna turn on History Channel no matter yeah. what day it is. Whatever's on. Really? Oh my oh, god! Dude, yeah, all day long. And if you're if you're lucky, you're gonna get Ancient Aliens like Friday night. Yeah. You're gonna get maybe like a, <laughs> like a Forged and Fire. Forged and Fire. Maybe American dude, Pickers Marathon. marathon. Yeah. I wish people could see the excitement on y'all's face. For real, dude. It's Forged and Fire. It makes that's you real. feel really at home, which is because that's what I do all the time. Anyways, I assume y'all are probably that way yeah. as well. But. That's exactly what, you know like we've got our like routine in the hotel, and everything else is just you know. What are we are we splitting hotels? Yeah, usually. I are mean, we it splitting depends. rooms? It are we, are we getting our own room? What are we doing? No, we're we're doing like like two rooms, okay. two double two double rooms. So you're yeah. almost at Bon Jovi phase. We're we're, we're a couple right steps there. from yeah. separate tour buses. Yeah. If we're I think they all hotel. they're all in one room. So yeah. once we go down, I don't know. Yeah, we'll I don't when the last time was <laughs> Richie Sambora stayed in the Clarion Inn. <laughs> yeah, right. But I would yeah. love to know. Yeah. So Richie, hit us up. I'm getting my points. Yeah, points, dude. Points. This one's actually supposed to be free. I have some points working. I got a late checkout. I've got some points built up. Take just, it out of my balance, maybe, just, maybe, just, maybe one o'clock checkout. That'd be great. Thanks. All right, so let's let's talk a little bit about music. We uh, I mentioned you're kind of all over the board. Uh, I think it's all under the rock genre, but some can sound a little more bluesy. You got a lot of blues sound. You got a lot of almost funk sound. I would say. Sure. Um. So you mentioned kind of everybody is pitching in on songwriting is there a main songwriter everybody's hey yes. here's what i got sam and i usually come up with the songs meaning like the verse and the melodies and the chord changes and then we all come together as a band you know usually in a sound check or a, a rehearsal we've set aside or you know before we go into the studio to work out some of those songs it's just uh okay here's the tune you know here's the, right. the melody and the chords so now let's make it a quaker city night hawk song you know let's let's do what we do to it so it, it's very much a collective process the whole thing. so how do you draw inspiration for songs like queso blanco At a taco stand? I'll tell you when Sam and I recorded that. All I know is I don't play drums, and I was wearing a backpack and playing drums in a cinder block rehearsal space that we had. And we were about <laughs> to leave. We were like, "All right, I'm done. Let's go home." And I was just like, "Yeah, let's go." And I was monkeying around on the drums, and he just started playing. And then one of us sang one of the lines, and then the other one just jokingly came up with the next line. And then in about wait, it's 30 not a real minutes, place. It is. Oh, it's a real, oh, it's a real oh, okay. place. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 We were referencing a real place. No, no, no. Ernesto's we were referencing is, is a real place. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, it's there's definitely an Ernesto in Fort Worth. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, but we were just talking about. I mean, we were just joking, and yeah. then it turns out it was fun as hell. You guys hell. mean you weren't trying to write a taco yeah, joke? Yeah, it turns song. out we didn't write it. Yeah, we didn't sit down and think like, yeah, let's do like, what's our favorite food, man? Like, you know. Well, we don't want to. We have joke songs about Mexican food. We but, really need to get yeah, a good let's one going. Get that going. So, well, I, there's a running joke. There's a, a there's a fellow podcaster. His name's Matt Coon, and he he jokingly labeled me as. Cassio was walking queso dip. It's, it's basically, <laughs> I've always got queso dip on my shirt. Yeah, so yeah. I'm like, queso blanco should technically be my theme song. But, yeah, for sure. Um, so we should say, you, you briefly <laughs> mentioned it. You're from Fort Worth. If, if, if somebody does not know, you guys are... You guys met and started from Fort Worth. Yeah, now. the band you're, started you're, in Fort yeah. Worth. You're in yeah. Nashville now, but the, the band started sure, there. Sure. So this taco place is in Fort Worth? It's Yeah, it's in... Area? It, everybody thinks it's a taco place because of... Yeah. Um, that show, there was a show that it was on that they actually built an Ernesto's like a taco cart, which was really cool. I think it was the show Scorpion, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, so a lot of folks think that it's a taco stand or something like that, but it's like a, it's a dine-in restaurant. Like, you like go a Mexican there and restaurant. You get a plate yeah. of enchiladas. Yeah. You know, they've got it all. So it's not necessarily like a taco place. We were just taking some, we were just taking some, li we just taking some liberties, for, you know. It's been there forever, forever too. Forever, man. It's like an old school place. I guess the like jam. Family Everybody owned, knows it. Family yeah. owned. Yeah, the people in the know know. You know. Do they know that you did a song about them? 
I don't know. No, we no. What? We've yeah. never found out. Yeah. Yeah. You should be getting free queso like, I know, for life. I know yeah. Sam was there. Yeah, like Sam just, goes there still. Like, yeah. like a couple weeks ago, and we still have no idea. <laughs> I need yeah. your. I expected like your headshots no. up there. We're no, like, man. I don't, yeah. and honestly, we're gonna sign this. Like, I don't think they give. A oh, they shit. don't give a shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> they, we, if you told them, they'd be like, okay, and just like walk off and be like, well, here's your ticket, you know? Yeah, like, it doesn't. Let do us know it. if you need any refills. <laughs> Two for one marks? Yeah. You're like, yeah, is this for us? No, no this know, is man. standard happy hour. No yeah. way. If anything, they'd probably charge us. They'd probably charge us <laughs> more for margaritas or something. We get, get a lawsuit slapped yeah, on us or something. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, we're going to need royalties for you. Yeah. God. By the way, let's right, scratch so let's this hope, from the record. Let's hope, uh, I'm going to edit this part out, okay? So <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get a cease and desist. Yeah. Uh, how is what is the music scene, quote unquote, in Fort Worth when you guys are starting? I, I don't know how it is oh, now, but when you yeah. guys are starting, is it when we started? There were like a handful of like older bands, you know, that would have been guys the age that we are now. You know, okay. whenever we were in our you know, early to mid twenties kind of situation. And they were all, it was a lot of alternative stuff that kind of still had kind of some echoes from like the 90s kind of alternative, like, you know, bands okay. like Blur or, you know, okay. there, there were bands like that. And grungy a little bit or a little bit, a little bit past yeah, absolutely. That? And kind of a punk kind of grunge thing, okay. you know, and there were some really, really cool bands, but they were all that, that was kind of the genre that sort of permeated a lot of the Fort Worth scene. Everybody first showed it's country up, you know. heavy. Yeah, and there were obviously, I mean, if you go Tons down to the country, stockyards, yeah. there's country guys playing. But as far every as rock, it's a little barren at that time. It, it was it, a little different. Yeah, you know, it was at least just different. For sure. And it was a lot of like fashion guys, too. Yeah. Like people definitely. that were like really concerned about what they were wearing more than what they oh, were okay. doing. We're going to look like a cool band. They were, yeah, and they all looked like cool bands. <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> and then it was yeah. downhill after that. It did. And, and they, they all looked great. Yeah. Yeah. But the posters look good. But there wasn't the, there wasn't a twang to a lot of the stuff, you know, that, that a lot of people would expect. But I think that's kind of why we sound the way we do is because we were just trying to find a little bit different he, thing to do. You know what I mean? We just weren't quite sold on the idea of just doing that. First of all, I didn't have any frame of reference for that music. Like yeah. if somebody had said play like them, I wouldn't have had any idea how to play the guitar that way. Like I don't even know how those songs are set up. So we were coming from a place of just, you know, I mean, the blues chord structure is kind of the same. So a lot of stuff follows that. Less so, you know, indie music that's bridge heavy and all that type of stuff. So, I don't know, but that was what the scene looked like when we first showed up. We were kind of weird when we first showed up because it was just, I mean, not that we're any less weird these days. I was about but, to say, I, I yeah. wish they could see you guys. <laughs> but the twang, the t like, and I, you know, I can see where people say that we have a little bit of a twang. And I think a lot of that is because Sam and I both have accents. And so when we sing, it just kind of has a twang to people not from Texas in the South, anyways. But, yeah. Yeah, so that was I'm kind from of from Alabama. The, I get that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. <laughs> but that was sort of the lay of the land back there. There weren't. There were a few really great rock clubs, but a couple of years after that was when there was really kind of a, it, the scene kind of started to blossom. You know, a lot of clubs started opening up. Yeah. Great places to go play, hang out with other musicians, start bands by just standing there watching other bands with guys that are in bands. Is that you know? late '90s, early 2000s? That's what is that? Early, like, yeah, early like 2004, 2005, okay. 2006 kind of. And area. it's like we had that same thing, but it was all we had to go to the same five places. Like you know, all of our friends played music, and we all kind of formed bands internally, and like a lot of different musicians. A lot of actually a surprising number came out of that yeah, that are still playing music. Nuts. Um, but we all went to the same places. So if you didn't know where somebody was, you could find them in four stops. Right. And most of those places were within three miles, sure. two miles of each like other. Like the whole little district area? Yeah, kind exactly. Kind of, yeah. yeah. And so we didn't, I mean, we didn't know any better. We were just going out and we just didn't have anything to do. So we'd go out every night and play. And when we first started playing, it was like multiple shows a day. For sure, yeah. Like, like multiple shows a day? Five or six days a week, yeah. Yeah. As as much as like a comic deal. As comic was like, yeah. let me yep. yeah. schedule stage time out so I can drive to the next Exactly. Gig. Like yep. there's no no problem in playing a show and walking across the street and playing another show. Oh, killer. Very yeah. much like the comic That's schedule. That's killer. Yeah. yeah. You and you know, do three sets and get paid 50 bucks for all yeah, of but them you're playing total. Music. Yeah, exactly. Right. You're doing yeah, it. You know? Same thing yeah. with comedy. You're like, and we, and we probably yeah. didn't deserve 50 bucks, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Like, and sometimes we didn't get paid that much. Yeah. So yeah. It works out. You know? <laughs> sometimes we got what we were worth, which was nothing. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Kicked out of there. <laughs> so I know we got, uh, we got Preacher's son. No. That's me. You. Okay. Yeah, Aaron. Sam is Aaron. Sam Aaron. That I know two of you were, uh -huh. were yeah. Preacher's son. So you're playing. So now I take it you guys are. 
You're not partying on the road or anything, right? You're preacher son. Oh, never. I haven't had any alcohol. Would you like some more of this? Absolutely. Yeah. Let's take a <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, my parents are. Was uh, it? I mean, how are they? What? Are, what is he still a preacher? He is still he? is. Yeah, Pentecostal preacher. So is he like you're playing devil's music, or is he? No. Is, and now I, he's okay. I think he's he was even okay with it back then. I think uh, my mom's kind of like a closet hippie. Okay. And so I learned about a lot of music that people of my age that grew up in the church, like had no idea. Like my mom, like, you know, John Denver and Joni Mitchell and, you know, like some Beatles, some, there's, there's a few different rock bands that got mixed in there, but like I knew about this whole other world of music and my parents were way, uh, interested in like what I was doing. Okay. They, they, they were, so they not, were supportive. They, yeah, they were supportive to a point. Like they weren't going to like full on support, but they <laughs> weren't going to come to the bar. They're not coming in to see my show. My mom's <laughs> seen me play like four times ever. Um, my dad like two, but, and, but they were very supportive. Yeah. They weren't, they weren't, um, discouraging it. I should say that's probably the best way to put it. Yeah. They'll let you do your thing. Let me do my thing. And they, they were just like, well, we're, if we try and stop him, we know it's going to get worse. Oh, yeah, so yeah. we might as well just let him go. <laughs> yeah. That was fine. So uh, take a swig, yeah. and then we're gonna pass that around. <laughs> so who are you? Are you who's the partier of the group? We're getting nobody we're getting, anymore. Yeah, we're getting older. I don't no, know. That, no, no, yeah. that's yeah. fine. But yeah, I mean, that only because it would have been easier probably to tell back in the day. But I don't really remember. But it's, I feel like it's all. I feel like <laughs> it's, it's all a blur back in the day. I feel like it's yeah. been really equal. Yeah, I feel that's. I feel like that's like the it's been a good well. run. Everybody yeah. will go through their times, even still on the road. Like like I might have a night where I just want to get lit up yeah and i will but i because i know not everyone's gonna do it yeah that's the problem with young bands like you see them all assembled after a show or something and they're all partying and drinking and stuff you're like so like who's in control of the situation (laughs) you know we're not like that at all you know we take we rotate are you gonna gonna sleep here or how in the hell are y'all gonna get anywhere you're just gonna get a hand on the wheel we gotta drive in just a second yeah Yeah. totally. all of us can get yeah we gotta somebody has to wake up at 6 30 tomorrow and get us down the road you know (laughs) we gotta get to norfolk virginia tomorrow by 5 p.m so load in you guys all married oh we got aaron is i am aaron's married yeah, not well, married. Not well, married. Not yet. Yeah, bunch of not marrieds, but like everybody's got girlfriends. Yeah. And so it's not like we're all. I mean, everybody. Down. Everybody imagines because you hear all you hear is stories from supergroup. People don't hear the stories of bands the, that are still reality. rocking. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So everybody imagines it's a fucking nudist colony in the tour bus yeah. with fucking cocaine and yeah. drugs and liquor, and you're like, yeah, no, this is no, a I mean, job. It is, it is definitely yeah. not a nudist colony. No, for sure. <laughs> uh, it's, well then, I'll put my pants on. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, hey, we didn't say that about in here. We just yeah, talk about the van, man. You can do whatever you want, road, but. Man. <laughs> so there's a there's a balance. I mean, I think I think people miss the part of you know, like you guys. I would say that this is your biggest record yet, right? Mm-hmm. Is that yes, right? Yes, it is. I didn't want to step on my own toes there. No, but no, you're all good. biggest record yet, mm-hmm. and. But in, my, in in people's heads, it's when they hear a band and they finally hear a song they like, they assume, oh, these guys just started, man. Yeah. They're on the road partying. They're having the time of their lives. Sure. They're doing shows. And it's like, like, like I mean, like you guys, I, you guys have been together 10 years now. You know what I mean? You're, what is this, four four albums deep? What is it? Yeah. Three or four? I don't even somewhere? know. Three or four, yeah, something like that. Four. Yeah. There's a so live like, album thrown Guys, in there. We're, we're in this a little bit. That's not a quote unquote overnight success. Right. Sure. Um, not a quote unquote success <laughs> yet, <Yeah, even laughs> <so. laughs> But, you know, we like it. <laughs> yeah, we do what we can. Yeah, we do what we can.
fascination and get you guys take on maybe 2019 how people are consuming music um there's so much streaming now and everybody's like man i love my spotify and and music is uh, bands are like well i get a nickel off that for 17 million plays so yeah yep. i think but it's i think it's a good and bad i think it's it's also how you discover bands now it used to be how the fuck do I discover the Quaker City Nighthawks? Yeah, sure. And now it's like random. It just pops up because I like another band and yeah. it comes up on a playlist. So maybe talk about good and bad. What, what are we What are we doing with the streaming world? What, what do you guys like about it? What do you guys hate about it? First of all, we have to find out if they have this room bugged or not. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're, all, they're listening to us right now. <laughs> Look, I got 13 listeners to this podcast. <laughs> no, You're we're good. just joking, man. <laughs> no. um, we, I don't know, man. Like To us, a lot of that stuff, I mean, like, for me, for example, so I'll speak for my own uh, self. But um, like, I don't know how many records we've sold. Like, I don't right. know how many streams we've had. It, you know, unless I think to myself, I need to go check. But even right. since the last time I checked, those numbers have changed. So I really don't have as great a grasp on that because when I do that, I'll look at which songs they played more. Yeah. You know, and all these kind of things. And sometimes that'll kind of get in my head. So I I don't necessarily know that I know as much about what is going on in that world. I know I That's stream. probably a good thing. More I try to just keep wise. a distance from yeah. it, but I mean, I know I personally stream 95% of the music I listen to right. so that, you know, I can speak to yeah, that. And, for sure. and 10 years ago, 15 years ago, if we'd have gone somewhere that we'd never been, nobody would have been there. Yeah. You got to like, do that slow grind. Right. Of, Absolutely. They need to tell a friend and then we need to come back right. next show and hope yep. their friends show up. And even up. if it's, even if 15 people show up in a place you've never been, that's massive compared Big to time. what it used to be. Yeah. Cause now you, you know that at least your music's getting out there, you know, and I listen to, I love Spotify. Like, yeah, I don't know that it's, it's not paying me anything, but I love it. Like I get right. it. And I would much rather do that than have to like remembering how it used to be when like, you just had to get like somebody gave you a CD or you had to like, find a flyer and then maybe you found a website maybe yeah. you didn't maybe you just had to ask somebody if they'd heard of it and like they were gonna lie and tell you they did and <laughs> yeah. you just had to it was just a whole it was a lot harder to just ingest music which that's it's great for that it's bad because it's so much harder or because it's so much easier to make music and to get it out there yeah that, like a lot of shit comes out now that would not have come out 20 years ago. Right. When there was a vetting process right. for sure. When, yeah. when there was, when there was money, when everything took a lot of money to do, it was, you know, it was much harder. You didn't get noticed to you had success basically on your own. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, what are these guys doing selling out this club downtown? The record label will go, Hey, let's go see them. They're right. doing yeah. something uh -huh. fucking right. right. Yeah. And now sure. you, and now, you know, like, I don't know. That's the good and bad. Yeah. I don't know so much music. I don't any music basically that comes out now. Um, but I know people do, and I know the only way that they're finding it out is via streaming services, the internet, like social media. That's it. Like, there's no other way to find it out. You're not like looking at your like your city's local rag every week in the back pages trying to find like, you know, a band mixed, name you've yeah, never heard yeah, of. Mixed, yeah. mixed in with all like the like the escort services trying to track <laughs> trying to track down a show that's going on. So maybe you can go and you didn't that's miss how I found it by a lot days. of bands. Yeah, yeah right? flipping through the old hooker section. Yeah, look in the back of a. Let's go see what concert I'm gonna take or yeah. two. Local <laughs> entertainment paper, and it's like, oh, there's a band called Rotten Dog playing at the someplace. Like, okay, yeah. I'm gonna look up Rotten no, Dog. You're at the mercy yeah. of your local clubs. Yeah, totally. for so sure. you're like, who are they bringing? That's that's the, that's exactly. the good. You know, it makes it easier for people that are making music that's good to get out there. The bad is it makes it easier for people that are, is, that are making complete garbage to get out there too. And so then you have to just hope that the listener is discerning enough to know what's worth listening to and who, what bands are worth, you know, spending your money on and what right. bands aren't. So, um, let's, I'm going to, I'm going to diverge. Cause okay. one of our diverge. main topics on the podcast is, I feel like you guys might can help this with as much gas station food as you eat. Mm -hmm. Mount Rushmore of Little Debbie Cakes. Oh, great. 
So Let's that's four. That we got second. four. four. Okay. In case your your Texas now, math doesn't know what's on Let's refresh. Board. Let's refresh. Let's do a little spitballing as to what the little Debbie snack cakes are. I Only little refresh. Debbies. Okay, okay, so we've got. Zebra so we're not cake. going to Hostess. What? We've got, got zebra, zebra cake. cake. Yeah. You've got is Ho Ho little Debbie? No, no, that's Hostess. Hostess. You got. You got, you got, you got See, z- I got to figure out which ones are little Debbie before I can pick. You got your zebra cake. You got your Nutter Butter. Yeah. Nutty, buddy. Nutty, nutty Buddy. Nutty Buddy. That's right. The Nutter Butter is the other one. It's a cookie. Nutter Butter is the peanut cookie. Would you? Also your, right. is solid. Yeah, your, uh, your oatmeal cream pie. Yeah. 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 You got, you got your, your uh, Swiss cake Swiss roll. Ca- oh. I think, honestly, I mean, I know there may be others, but to me, if it was Mount Rushmore, those is are the four it? most iconic. Yeah. I don't know what order I'd put them in, but. So we got we got a couple variations. You can, you can sling in the fudge round. Okay. That's right. If you're oh, in the, on the fudge, fudge round. round. What's, the, what's the, uh, the, the strawberry like cheesecake the spark, roll? The sparkle cake one or the star cake? Star, star cake. Cr- oh, star, star crunch. crunch. Star it, crunch. Yeah. The Krispies. The Krispies Rice one, Krispies yeah. in there. That's solid. Wait, is that in your top four? No. Well, there's some people that's got that in the yeah, top. Yeah. I'll, I'll say, I'll go They're ahead and give crazy. you my number one. And I don't know how we're ranking um, the four presidents. You don't, you don't, you don't have to go Chronologic, to ride. Chronologically. I'm just, no, I'm just giving you four. You my don't even have to put them in order. top one, no doubt about it, is the... The, the zebra cake when it's the Christmas version. Okay. Oh, yeah, dude. So, okay, Christmas we, tree one. If anybody's listening to the podcast, Cole Kublik, who is a uh, college football analyst for ESPN, me and him used to have a radio show. So we started this discussion and we got very heated. Mm-hmm. And then it carried out over to when he was on my podcast and then some other guests have now taken advantage of it. <laughs> Christmas tree cakes. Christmas tree cakes. Is yeah. what you're talking That's about. That's my number yeah. one. He says... Hands down, number one. That's my yeah. number one. Because did you know right now it's Christmas in July? They've got them out. I did not know that. I will be visiting a grocery store Walmart. or gas station. <laughs> on my way Walmart home. exclusive. Oh man, done deal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is it, it the same color variations, or do we it's, have like a red, white, and blue? No, it's everything. Great. <laughs> They've got Santa Claus and a Hawaiian shirt on the front. I love it. Christmas Great. in July version. The reason that they didn't release that till after my podcast. The I'm reason, taking credit for that shit. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. The reason those are superior. <laughs> To the zebra cake, which it is essentially the same thing. It's because with they sprinkles. Have, with sprinkles. It's those little like see through sprinkles. Okay. Yeah. And you, the added crunch. So that's his jam. I say zebra cake because it's year round. Yeah. Good but point. he says straight up if we got them all out on the table, you're going Christmas. You're going Christmas. Cake. Yeah. So that's in your top four. That's your number one. That's my number one. Followed by Swiss cake roll. Aaron the drummer's got Christmas tree cakes, Swiss, Swiss cake, cake roll, roll, zebra cakes. You're doing both. I'm taking okay. a, oh, I'm taking them oh, both. Damn. I'm taking them both. Up. Oh, Nine, my four. God. Okay. In no particular order. Four. Four. Star Crunch? No. Swiss Cake. No, I already got that. number two. Oh, yeah. You got Swiss Cake, Zebra Cake, Christmas Tree. I like the one that's the... Oatmeal? Uh, the, the, the peanut... Oh, yeah. That's that's definitely number four. Oh, I got, no, a, okay. I got a close five, though. Four is oatmeal cream pie, no doubt about it. Okay. Five is the the wafer, like the not the not the peanut not the, butter sticks. The peanut butter sticks. TV sticks. I that's think that's they call number it. five. But those, yeah, no doubt about it. That's an honorable mention. If we're gonna add um, into the stone, you know, if we're gonna put if we're gonna put Obama fifth president. on the on <laughs> right. you know, let's just go ahead and say if we're gonna go ahead and do <laughs> that, then that's, Obama's the PB sticks of little Debbie. PB okay. Hell yeah, get him up there. He knows it, David. Um, I would just go. Um, oatmeal cream you pie. You didn't go like Boston cream pie. I thought you were going to sing nope. it like a wild card. I would go oatmeal cream pie, um, Nutter Butter, or Nutty Buddy. Nutty excuse Buddy. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know, man. Those are really the only ones I, I eat. Yeah. I mean, if that's your jam, that's yeah, your that's jam. That's my jam. I mean, I'm not going to... So Do you like, I guess like what I'm donut saying, sticks, like the Dunkin' sticks or whatever? Yeah, they're all right. I guess what I'm saying is we're going to have to take a couple of faces off of Rushmore for this to work. <laughs> <laughs> You're so yeah. right. I'm, I don't You're really care. Sheet I don't care them. who's really. like. That yeah. works great. Into the next question is, what two faces would you take off Mount Rushmore? <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Jefferson. That's oh, wait, a who's on there? We got Washington, Jefferson. Because that's a problem that no one's no. ever faced before. Yeah. What two are you going to take Guys, off? we've got some dynamite we need to is use. Is Roosevelt on there? Guys, guys, he's I, on a dime. He's it's, on a dime. He should I mean, be on. Yeah, he makes. If you make money, Wait, now, like, we you make now we go. It's 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 a. Uh, is it Roosevelt? Jefferson, Washington, Jefferson, Washington? I feel like Lincoln. it's Roosevelt, Lincoln and Roosevelt. Is it Roosevelt? I don't know. That's it, my uh, guess. Taft. <laughs> is, it, is Taft? <laughs> <laughs> he's just all of this. It's stuff. Roosevelt, Lincoln, Jefferson, Jefferson. Washington. Okay, um, and that's Theodore Roosevelt. I don't want to. Those are all that great, is old Teddy. Those old are all Teddy. great heroes, but I have to. I can't take Teddy down because 
he allegedly formed the Rough Riders in the stockyards in Fort Worth. <laughs> you got to keep him. Hello, that's what DMX. They, of course, that's what they all they say there. <laughs> yes. You know, they he could definitely be making formed it. DMX is the Rough Riders. Yeah. Oh, man, what a what a legacy. <laughs> <Yeah>. You know, <laughs> people great, don't talk about man. him enough. He was the king of rat terriers. Did you know that? No. The rat terrier dog. He was. He made him famous. Well, really? see, he's not, great. Not man. famous enough. We've never heard of that. But you've never heard of a rat terrier? Not that he had Looks anything like to do Jack with Jack Russell terrier. I know. I know what they are. I just didn't know his affiliation. Also, let's. He had him in the White House. Really? Well, that was back when the White House had rats. Had rats. So you <laughs> had to have a terrier. To go. I have a. I have a Washington hypothesis here. Oh, okay, no. George here Washington. I did, by the way, I had a lot of things written down. Washington hypothesis from David was not oh, on the list. Oh, you mean the can't na- wait to see where it goes. Oh, you mean the name of this episode of this <laughs> podcast? No, it's now Washington <laughs> hypothesis. So here's the deal: can the first can the fir- yes. can the first of anything really be that good at it? You know what I mean? Oh, here we go. No, think about this: first guy to ride here a first guy to ride a bike is he anywhere close to the thousandth yeah. guy that rode? He a bike? taught wait. us all, David. Did, yeah, did, did I don't he know. invent the bike? <laughs> oh, that's the key. Wait. Yeah. Because if 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 because Washington theoretically invented democracy with the help of a lot of other people, and if he did, then he is the best. I got you. But yeah, if he just took it from somebody else and was like, I'm but the my king. whole deal is like, so say like it doesn't take him a few years for them to like. Kind of get in the swing of it. Good point. That you know first what I mean? Like maybe the shit, dude, had yeah. a giant ass wheel. Like yeah, but he was <laughs> learning on the job. Well, I know that's what I'm saying. So we give. Have you ever learned? For that. Have you ever learned on the job before? Because that. No, that's, I got uh, fired. On yeah, me job. too. That's what I'm saying, <laughs> exactly. dude. It doesn't work good. <laughs> and that was the little Caesars. Okay. I'm, just saying, I'm sure he had a lot to tell the second president, which is like, first of all, don't do all this stuff. Yeah. Do who's do the this. second president? Go. I don't know. Fuck off! I'm taking another shot. <laughs> Washington. <laughs> no, nah, I don't he was, he was the first. I thought maybe if I started at the top, it'd roll like, out. Is first. it Jefferson? No, he's like fifth, I think. I almost just started with Alabama, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado. <laughs> Wait, state. that's the states, so I don't have any. I can't figure it out. <laughs> Who invented the bicycle? <laughs> Pierre Lalament. Oh, yeah. No, we're no, not giving no, him thanks. credit. No. We need an American. John Kemp Starley. He sounds American. I also like that you can look up a guy who invented it and then another guy says he invented it. Like, what is that? Bitch, I invented it. I'm American. I invented it. That's definitely the American. (laughs) No, 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 man. It's been been around for 300 years in France. You invented it over in France. Now, what day did you invent that? Yeah, I did it the day before. Yeah. Oh, no, I definitely did. I've got a newspaper clipping to to, uh, to agree with me. Here we go. Oh, they used to... this This is the name of your next album. All right. You know what they used to call the bike? No. A gentleman's hobby horse. Uh, yeah, there we go. I, I feel like it's at least a song title. I don't hate yeah. it. I don't a hate gentleman's it. hobby a horse. A gentleman's hobby horse. I think they could work I, with that. I think it's a band name. Somebody needs to take <laughs> yes. that as a band name. Gentleman's I hobby horse. I feel like they're playing yeah. at Bonnaroo next Or you could even say already horses. They're already they've, they've, formed. Yeah, they're going <laughs> to announce. The gentleman hobby horses. You they're know? actually going to announce the band before they form. Yeah. Way gentleman before hobby horses playing. Like, who is it? They're coming. They're probably going to headline. That's <laughs> not. They're probably going to be like. They're and they're going to be a hologram. They are doing Saturday night, like right before the Killers, maybe right after. But it's also. I'm just going to go ahead and just say this now. The Killers are probably going to play next year. Yeah, because they are play you it? every year, <laughs> every single year, and they're great. I mean, don't get me started. The Killers versus Bon Jovi. Give me the Killers, but they're going to play next year. Okay, there you go. I'm down with that. Hot sports. You heard it here first. Mr. Brightside. Hot take. Right here. Yep. Mr. Brightside. They're going to only play Mr. Brightside. Speaking of bands that. (laughs) For 17 minutes. Over and over. Okay, you got to let me finish this whole sentence without. I cannot be interrupted. Speaking of bands. Speaking of bands that I hate. Oh, no. The Killers is not one of them. Killers is an outstanding outfit. See, I hooked you around there. You thought I was going to trick you. Nothing. They're great. Oh, no. No, we can't do that. We can't do that. What What are. So, speaking of bands you hate. Yeah. Let's. Just, you know, power rank those according to Mount Rushmore. Oh man, I don't know. There's not enough faces on There's that. Right here, here's the <laughs> deal. <laughs> They'd have to go Look, all the way I'm around. not in the music business, so I don't give a fuck. Um, per, I just base them off of times I've met them and how they were. Mm-hmm. You met the Killers? Is that what you're talking no, about? No, no, no. Okay, I'm, I'm about to say bands I hate. Okay, oh yeah. Uh, excited. One would be Vince Neil. Vince Neil. Have you Neil? ever met Vince Neil? No, I have not. Uh, is he the one with the one head wrap or the multiple head wraps? I don't. I don't. Know. It's a thick what, bandana. What I don't know how what many era? bandanas. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how many bandanas. It keeps yeah. growing. Bandana head wrap. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Uh, 
I was on a quote unquote rock cruise, and he was one of the uh, he was one of the guys. He was one of the headliners. I was with another band, and uh, like hanging, not yeah. like in the band. Um, but he was like, he was a dick bag to everybody on the cruise, and it's like, guy, you're one of the reasons we were on the cruise. Like people would try to take pictures of him, and he would put double birds in front of his face, and. Classy. No, no yeah. meet and greets, and like stay in the VIP, and would like literally like look down and laugh. And now, like, now for our younger listeners, and for David and I, who's Vince Neil? Yeah, I don't know. That's <laughs> what I need. I mean, I know his name. I know that he's a I rock know star. A, I know he's a. I know he's a, a Motley Crew. Guy. Motley Crew. Oh, Motley Crew. There it is. That's why I didn't know who he was. Oh, not a fan. No, I just don't know anything about him. I mean, I don't even know what their music sounds. You like. You didn't see the dirt. Do what? No, I did, I did no. watch the dirt. And I, I would did. watch. I do want to watch that. And it, it's cool. I'm not even talking it's trash. Not, I just don't know cool. anything don't know. about a lot of I that mean, music. Like that, that my, that wasn't on my folks' radar. Yeah, in that area, I was just raised on stuff that wasn't any of that stuff. So what were you just raised on? Um, a lot of different stuff. Like rock stuff would have been your Credence, ZZ Top kind of world. Oh, and Texas. Then, okay. Yeah, and then my dad listens to listen to a lot of Jimmy Buffett. My dad's a really parrot head. Parrot head. Yeah. yeah. And my mom um, listens to all kinds of stuff. Paul Simon, um, James Taylor, that kind of folky 70s stuff, which I also love. I think it's weird that um, music-wise, and I, I think a lot of people have the same kind of cycle, is when you're growing up, you kind of hate what your parents are quote-unquote making you listen to because they're playing it in the house. And then I think the older you get, you're kind of like, Shit, that was pretty good music they were listening to. Yeah. Do you guys feel that? I mean, like, I like. Do you feel that, or do you? I like, like oh, certain no. parts of it from the time I first heard it. Like, right. I, I liked some of that rock stuff from the very first time I heard it. Like, okay. I thought ZZ Top. Like, my dad would walk around the house and go, "Women go," you know, just like as a joke <laughs> all the time. Like, probably a million times in my childhood, and I didn't even know it was a song until like you know I was. 15 or something. He was just quoting it. Oh, yeah. Or he'd just have all these. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just thought it was him being one of his weird jokes. But I liked that. I thought Creedence was super rad. I also liked, um, like, I still love Paul Simon. I listen to Paul Simon all the time. And so a lot of that stuff I definitely still listen to. But um, there was some of their music that was a little too dorky for me. I can't think of anything specific. I I know, like, the one that. Are you jamming Call Me Out? Let's go with this. Dude, oh, I, any day of the week, man. Oh, he, yeah. Paul Simon is like... And his it's, new stuff? It's on the heavy rotation in the band. His new, What's that one? Like his wristband new, or something? Yeah, wristband, dude. Yeah. So that whole record... Was it wristband? Yeah. He oh, made I it with the, I pulled that out. He made it with this that guy... That's a good that, song. It is. True story, too. He made it with the guy that had produced like a ton of his records. And him... I don't know what age Paul Simon is. 76, 74, somewhere in that so, yeah. ballpark. Throw in your Google machine if you're yeah, listening. Well, Go his ahead. buddy... I, and you'll have to look this up, somebody that cares enough. But um, <laughs> Meaning, you know, we don't have time right now. But... uh. So the guy that he made it with had produced many of his records, and this dude is in his 90s, you know, and so is That's Paul, crazy. and this guy was like 90-something, and if you listen to that record, that is the freshest, like, it, it fits on radio today, and it was made by a 93-year-old dude and his younger buddy who's 76 or whatever, you know, <laughs> and, they're just, and they're just smoking fools, like, th- sonically, his new stuff is, is top-notch, so like what what year? Badass. What probably year was wristband? I don't. I don't oh, that's remember. recent. Uh, that was like, like two years ago. Yeah, yeah, year, yeah like super year years. Yeah. Uh huh. Because yeah. I remember seeing. Uh, I saw it on a TV show. Jules Holland. I don't know yeah, if you've ever sure. seen that guy. I, I love that show just because it's so all over the board. Dude, and, that's great. And he's yeah. going to have some great guys and then mm-hmm. some people you've never heard of. So when I saw like Paul Simon, you know, I used to record at DVR or whatever you want, and I would be like, I don't know, Paul Simon, what's he doing? Yep. What are we doing? <laughs> yeah. Like, we, you know, we call me Al here, and he's like, got a new jam, it's wristband or whatever. I'm like, oh, okay, new music. New music, yeah. yeah. And then, like you said, you're like, oh, shit, this is like, sounds current. Yeah, like, it does, yeah. It doesn't sound like he's an old, quote, old Paul Simon. Yeah. yeah. He's managed to reinvent himself in like the best possible way, where he's yeah, become dude. a better musician, a better songwriter, and actually been able to record it. Yeah. You know, there's like a lot of the, like the older guys, like they might be, they're better just from age. Like they've done it more, so they know how to do it better, but they're not, they've, they've lost touch with like whatever spark they had that was, you know, just giving them like full hits and, and just writing like the, like music that was timeless. Like they kind of lost that at some point. Dude, so, so another cool thing about that track, that uh, wristband. So it's an Italian electronic artist named Clap Clap. 
like clap exclamation Wait, part, clap, clap exclamation, clap, exclamation clap, part. Exclamation mark. Okay, so this guy makes electronic music using all tribal like drums, and he yeah. goes samples drums from all over the world, all these different you know groups that practice like ritual drum music and all these different sounds. That's his gimmick. Is I'm gonna go sample drums. Uh, like, that's I mean, his, yeah, gimmick, that's his deal. Yeah, I'm gonna go yeah it's really great. Yeah. yeah, and so Paul Simon like heard, imagine this. So he put some shit on like SoundCloud or something a few years ago. And Paul Simon had like been jamming it at his house, unbeknownst to this guy. And the guy had just kind of was doing his thing and, you know, not a huge artist anywhere, but doing st some stuff internationally. And Paul Simon's like, hey, man, could you do three tracks for my new record? And he did the first one, Werewolf, one other one I can't recall, and then that wristband song. And just out of it, like, got called up from the no leagues, <laughs> like not even the that minors, like just off the, beauty, the bench. Dude. The beauty and the downside of streaming music right. is – there's no, there's no way. Twenty years ago, Paul Simon's discovering clap, clap, exclamation point. No, yep. There's no way it happens. I don't know. Not at all. He also was traveling a lot like, back then. Yeah, he but found I mean, a band you know in I mean. South Africa. He no, may he have would found some cool shit. Yeah. But right. specifically, this yeah. guy. Dude, you're right. Yeah, he was never deep. getting his music in the hands right. of, of exactly. Paul Simon. Paul Simon, might, he might have had that true. idea and figured out a way to do it. But maybe not with that artist. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah he's got that creative in him. But right. This specific clap clap, there's no way. I mean, he's got a medium on a show. Yeah. Hang out. Here's and my then, demo. And then get him to listen to it label. after he gives yeah. it to him. You know, the odds of that are none. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, no Thanks, way. dude. <laughs> Throw it so, over. So what about you, Preacher's kid? Are they, what are they jamming in the house? Oh, man. Well, I'm, I'm. She said mom's closet hippie, though. Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting some of that, like classic rock radio, <laughs> war in the car. Um. I'm getting, but also like, you know, growing up in church and going to youth group, I'm getting like, you know, what is considered now like classic Christian rock, like, okay. like DC talk, like early, yeah. early rap band, um, news boys and news boys, yeah. noise, news boys, audio yeah. adrenaline, Carmen, you know, all those, all those, I mean, someone made the crossover, like, you know, they did, skillet yeah. and all that. Totally. Yeah. Foot crotch and I mean, even like, I mean, yeah. in this town, like all the guys from DC talk still live around here and they're producing Crush it. Decent Christian records. talk. Yeah. Decent Christian talk. Dude. <laughs> yeah, dude, DC talk. <laughs> but yeah, like those guys, you know, I think they were, they kind of grew up in very similar ways that we grew up where they might've been like grown up in the church and like, they were just trying to express themselves and they pushed the boundaries as far as they could. And like, we just, you know, Molotov cocktail the boundaries. We're just like, <laughs> fuck it. Like, we're just going to make music. But they, yeah, they did that. So I, you know, grew up listening to all that stuff and probably was influenced by that way more than I know because I didn't have any other things. You know, like, even like, like, you know, deep, like, Decent Christian talk as a band, DC talk, like, <laughs> or, or my intro to rap I music, the, you know? Say the full name. Like, right. I, you know, I learned that. I learned that, like, you could do that from these, you know, Dudes that were from, you know, suburban homes in Tennessee. You were and, are, where are Don't they lie. from? Are they Sandy from Patty. Tennessee? Don't lie. I'm not lying, dude. Sandy Patty all the way still. <laughs> Give me Sandy Patty for, for the win. Circle gets a square. Uh, yeah, Car I mean, my fir the first concert I ever went to was Carmen. Oh, yeah, yeah was it? Yeah, it was. It was in, that it was, was in, first concert first ever, First concert, Carmen. I was, I was uh, probably six, five or six years old, and it was in, like, the War Memorial Auditorium in the little town I grew up in, which is basically a big tin can you know with a concrete slab underneath and it was carmen he didn't have a band with him it was him and a keyboard player and a light show brought it Whoa. down incredible Dude. never forget <laughs> it as long as i live his keyboard player's name was willie too that's what i remember he just was, kept saying let's give it up for willie or carmen what? carmen and willie in a light show and that was that was that was it like i was like so you can do that huh okay cool so you're jamming in the church playing oh yeah drums that first 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 gigs ever church gigs i was you know Free labor. I was there. Yeah, I yep. could. Child any bodies filling in. Yeah, you gotta have Who somebody. You gotta have somebody for that that second Sunday night. You know, when nobody wants to play and everybody's trying to go home. And first concert, Carmen. Carmen. Second concert. Nobody. I don't even know. Some. What? All right. What's the second concert that you remember? Like, oh, holy shit. Um. Okay. It was. <laughs> oh yeah. It was a, another Christian artist. Pretty obscure. Maybe not. But. Definitely. Uh, <laughs> his name was Dallas Holm. Okay. And he was like a Christian songwriter. I thought you were going to say Bebo Norman. I thought we no, were no, going no, 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 no. We're not. <laughs> not okay. I haven't heard that name. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, all right. No, Dirty. nothing Dirty. nothing like that. This guy like came to our church, and the only reason I remember it was because my dad and I went to pick him up from his hotel to bring him to church. And it was like the – I mean, I was 
He thought that was the coolest thing yeah, ever. Yeah, I was six years old. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe seven. I was like, this is amazing. This guy's going to like, people are coming to see this guy, and we're going to pick him up from the airport, from the airport Marriott or something, you know, whatever it was. How many people's at the church gig? I, maybe, you know, maybe 500. Okay. 600. Well, that's you know, a good size. It was a good, yeah, it was yeah. a good, good size, good amount of people. So but, that means he was touring, he was doing good gigs. Oh, yeah. Christian he, had, music scene. He, he probably had songs that people were playing in church that whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, there's like, I, you know, I have like Carmen. Dallas home, and then there's like a. What's the first show you paid your money for? Hey, we're going. Ooh. Um. Because it's usually teens. Yeah, it would. You might get your parents to drop you off. Usually, it's after everybody's driving. It was. Uh, I think it was three eleven and oh, yeah. a band from St. Louis called The Urge. Okay. And it was it would have been in St. Louis because that's I I went to high school in St. Louis and then moved to Texas after that and I think it was 311 and the Urge and every Christmas they did like a show at a place uh I don't even know if it's there anymore called Mississippi Nights and it's this okay. like it was this old club right downtown on the on the river in in St. Louis and yeah we like me and my buddies could drive and that was the first time that we're in we're going to see it and yeah was it, was it everything amazing. you loved? It was awesome. I still love 311. <laughs> still love 311. I don't care. I get I get I get shit all the time for it. I love 311. I'll put it on still. I, I remember now going back and looking on it. I, two of my buddies who played drums and guitar. Yeah. They wanted to get on the high school talent show and play 311 down. And they were like, "Dude, you joke around and sing it in class. We don't have a singer. Would you sing it?" And I was like, "Are you fucking out of your mind?" <laughs> I'm not singing 311. <laughs> Look, and then, like, watching them, they did it anyway. Found yeah. again another guy, of course. And as I was watching the talent show, I'm like, fuck, that should have been me. Still, it's it's, it's going to change the whole trajectory. It's still yeah. the great regret of <laughs> yeah, it. It's, it's, it's going to won that thing. <laughs> yeah, we were doing down in Amber. Let's do Dude, it. It's the great regret of your life <laughs> yes. is that school talent show. Yeah. but What do you got? First oh. concert and then okay. first you paid for. First concert on my own. was Doobie Brothers Amarillo Civic Center, Ooh. circa God knows when. That's cool. So your parents took you? I think my dad took me, and I think my mom might have been with my sister somewhere, but I, I just know that I was there, and I didn't drive myself for sure, or, <laughs> or buy the tickets because I didn't know about the Doobie Brothers. <laughs> well, how old are you probably? I was probably like, you know, I might guess it's like 8 to 10 kind of. Okay. So you're just like, hey, we're on a show. Yeah, and I remember just like, us running up and down the stairs in the little basketball stadium. You were really like, paying attention. No way. We were in the back okay. just like doing whatever, like throwing it's glow sticks. It's just a night out of the house. Throwing a bouncy ball in the air. Yeah, exactly. My parents have taken but me out of the fun. house. Yeah. 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 And then it's fun when I realize later that I can say that that was my first show. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. You know, I probably wouldn't pay any attention. Um, you were talking about uh, 311, and I played Sublime at a high school talent show. Oh, yeah. I was really into Sublime. I still am. They're both groovy. Dude, yeah, we were cool. Must have been right. <laughs> we yeah. were cool. We we would have been friends Mark in high school. Down. That's yeah. that's really what it was. We, <laughs> yeah. would have, we would have each had a friend in high school had we gone Wait, to high school. Were you skaters together. or what, were you vans? What are you doing? Yeah, I would have been probably wearing. I don't know. I'd probably come out of my vans phase, and I was probably more cargo shorts, long hair. Yeah. Okay. But I went through definitely a skater phase, and at the time I was blasting. Chevelle, or uh, excuse me, Chevelle. Um, Sublime in high school, I had a green Chevelle. It was like the color of this mic. Strong. Bar. That's a John ugly Deere green. green right it was, there. It was bad. And I'd just drive around in that thing blasting Sublime <laughs> all day long. <laughs> like, I'd just cruise yeah. around. Gas was a dollar a gallon. Yeah. Like, just rolling around Amarillo. Yeah. Guys, have you heard this? Yeah. It's called Sublime, guys. Yeah. Oh, so it's, the, and it's loud. It's beach music. It's real yeah. loud. Yeah. It's, it's rap. Real it's loud. Yeah. real loud. It's so rap we, and rock, guys. So, uh, and reggae. Yes. I, I love awesome. reggae, and I still really, really, really love reggae. But um, we lost the talent show. To who? Yeah, who won? Okay, you're going to love it. Um, <laughs> we <laughs> made Aaron both. <laughs> to who? I'm pretty sure th there were, we lost two years in a row, so it's, I get them mixed up oh, sometimes. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, Defending champs. One yeah. of them was a- You're the Buffalo Bills. A, a band that covered POD. Well, I mean, oh, of course. Well, that makes so, sense. You know, they won. And also, I don't know how Cutting good, edge. I don't know how good we did. It's rock. But it's Christian. I felt really they good. <laughs> they had, they had all that you had, but the Christian yeah. aspect. All I remember is that I had a buddy from high school that uh, played with us, and- um, his mom, I guess, had moved to Amarillo for her work from Canada. And so he was Canadian and he had a broken foot. So he had a full foot cast. Is this first or second talent show? 
This was the second one. Okay. Yeah. So it's just funny to play. It was me, a Canadian with a broken leg, and a drummer. So drums? Something to, oh, oh, no, I don't know. Saying. You know, like, who knows? We got a broken foot and a <laughs> <Yeah>. drummer. <laughs> we just yeah. back there clubbing. So, What's second year? What do you mean? Uh, what song did we play? Did yeah. you do Sublime again? No, nah, man. I'd already st- started coming up with my own originals. <laughs> can I, can I, can I, can yeah! I, yeah, we did an original. Oh, I was going to get Dave Matthews Band. No, okay. but I'm sure the original sounded like Dave Matthews Band. <laughs> I don't know. Probably. We yeah, did, I we, made a record when I was like 16. Yeah, like we, we paid an Amarillo to record it, and like I had some buddies and all this stuff. But I remember this. There was a moment where like we were kind of wrapping it up with this crazy dude who was fine, but he probably I don't know. I feel like he was just doing whatever. And he's like, "Yep, now pay me all my money. Cool, good right. luck, kids." Yeah. But he was like, "Yeah, now y'all can just sell them." And I was like, "Oh shit, we can sell these things." And in my eyes, I was like. We're gonna make a million dollars, you know, but <laughs> we did not. Yeah, I don't, I, we probably we, just, did not. we did not. You, so For you, the record, you, you did. You did not. We sold saying. them, but we you did sold. not. But we did not make a million dollars. Yeah, we sold, you know, to the kids at our school, and nobody wanted to buy. I think. Them. I, mean, I think Dave, Dave and I are like this in the same way as like we our first records we made were we were 16, yeah. 15, 16. Yeah. For really? Oh, yeah. It was like, like ten would, songs, all st- stuff I'd written, and, yeah. and got a band together. I mean, it's not good, but it. No. Yep. Do you, you still know. have it? I probably have about a thousand of them in a box in the attic or something. You, see, you, you know still I mean? could make a million off of them. Yeah, yeah no, it's just not going to happen. That's going to be is yeah. I need it. to go find that thing so I can light it on fire the whole box and just no. Yeah. Uh, That's yeah. what you, know, you need. We need <laughs> one more song for yeah. the record. Let me yeah. go back in the archives. Also, oh, maybe just get the band together. Yeah, just one more reunion tune. show. Oh man, yeah, what really? was the name of the band? Stomping Grounds. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah, what about you? It was Wednesday Night Live. Yeah. Wednesday Night Live. Yeah, it was a it was a punk rock three piece punk rock band, and uh, I was the oldest. We I started when I was fifteen, and they were both fourteen. And I think the the best day of my dad's life was when I got my license, because so we, were like, we, were a, we were like we were a we were drive to your own we stuff. were a gig in band like we were at, really oh man at fifteen I was probably this is St Louis yeah I was probably playing fifty shows a year. Whoa! Yeah, at punk rock shows, so it was like 50, 50 shows a year, and you know we were probably playing 25, 30 songs a, a show, and as fast as we possibly could. And yeah, I mean, I did, I did like punk band was Friday night, jazz band was Saturday, and church on Sunday, and that was it for like four years. Good gracious! We got stomping grounds and Wednesday Night Live. Yeah, man, I can't wait for. I hope, they're, I hope they're all listening. Yeah. For the re, do you do you keep up with any of those dudes? No, no, no. I don't. No. <laughs> I, do, I don't. what like twenty years since you've seen them? Fifteen, ten? It's when, whenever yeah, our last 16, show was, yeah. I don't have any idea. Yeah, <laughs> really? Yeah, I, ours would have been when we just all left for. I mean, we didn't play that much, but um, just when I left for high you, school, I high left school? town. Yeah, I've never yeah. been back. I mean, are you are you Fort Worth High School? No, uh, I'm from Amarillo. Okay, then y'all Texas. y'all met in Fort Worth. In Fort yeah. Worth, yeah. yeah. So this was all college or just after high school, whatever age? Yeah, they, kind of around. Did we then. all met? Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, right around there, like early twenties. Were you all playing in bands and hey, you, I kind of like your sound. Is this not working out? How do we all mesh together? Usually, it was more of a hey, I have a gig. Like, who wants to play it with? Right. You know, like, it was a lot of that. Like, I've got money to give out. Definitely guys just trying to set stuff up because of the, there were so many gigs to be it had. Was, it was definitely not, I've got money. Yeah, that's <laughs> I need sure not I can promise you I've that. got stage time. That's yeah. what I should say. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I've, got, yeah. I've got an hour. Yeah. You want to do something? <laughs> yeah, sure. Because we were all, we, I mean, we were in, before Quaker City even started, like, Sam and Dave and I played in a band together. So we've been playing music together for like way way before the the band was a thing or even okay. even thought of yeah so if you're if you're if you're I've heard the story if you're listening Quaker City Nighthawks very original band name one of you like to proceed on how we got to the name Quaker City sure. Nighthawks I've got this for you first of all I'll tell you um I was in Fort Worth walking through an antique store with my mom one time and Sam called and was like hey man I'm want to start a new band you want to be in it and i was like what's it called and he like, said quaker city nighthawks i was like yes <laughs> but anyway so it comes from a mark twain book um called the innocence abroad and it's a story where he yeah. is supposed to I'm go passing the shot around, oh yeah there you go i need go to explain it. why i just randomly <laughs> yeah yeah i love twain yeah twain who hasn't seen a bra who hasn't read yeah. abroad <laughs> yep so he's going over to the holy land on a boat that's Jerusalem. Yeah, with a bunch of religious folks of every different persuasion. 
and he doesn't want to be there, but he's getting paid and it's a commission job thing. So he's just trying really hard to find um, anybody who will drink and gamble and smoke with him. And it's not super easy because of the the piousness of all of the people on board. And so he finally finds this group of dudes and they um, start a card game on the, you know, after everyone's, everyone's gone to sleep, just kind of below deck or whatever. And um, the boat was called the USS, I assume USS, I don't know, but the, the, but the boat was called the Quaker City. Mm-hmm. And so after they'd kind of been on this, you know, I think it took them a few months to get over there on, by boat. And by the end of it, they'd kind of formed this little group that would all just drink and play cards and hang out together. And they dubbed themselves the Nighthawks. And then, you know, Quaker City Nighthawks is, is what they ended up calling themselves. So Sam had read that in a Mark Twain thing and thought that was pretty pretty cool. So we That's a pretty it deep it. name. It was pretty yeah. cool. It's usually yeah. just like we saw it on a billboard. Or something. I know. And it's funny because people ask me that, you know, yeah. like after the show. And they do not want to hear that whole story. No. They want me to be like, it's a tattoo I have on my back. And they'd be like, cool. <laughs> Instead, I'll start with Mark Twain. They're like, oh, God dang it. Why did I ask this idiot? His last uh, name is Quaker. Yeah. City. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> not. And Hawk's over there. So have you read Mark Twain? Nah, fuck it. Unless no. you want to do Jaeger. Never read a stitch. <laughs> <laughs> Never read a stitch. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So people get more than they, they want to know. So if you want to know the name of or how our name got or came about, don't ask us because it's a super long story. And you're going to lose interest. I, I no, they just you. heard it. Now we're all good. Yeah. No, I don't mean us. Yeah, I just mean in shots. public. I mean, well, yeah. you know, Everyone if you come up to the merch table. Buy strings. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if they come to one of your shows, since you're still driving, are they are they allowed to buy you drinks? I'm setting up the listeners for if they oh, see yeah, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. for sure. We're just not partying until daylight. Well, we, we get them in fast. We usually like to take a, take a temperature of the internal internal band temperature before and who's not going to who doesn't want to drink who's that not night. feeling it okay yeah. we we do that they we, pull over to driving duty and then the rest can do yeah whatever one's a dd and one the other end is uh-huh. spilt fuck there's there's you know the, what yeah. i mean yeah. there's a, there's an and there's all levels of in between you <laughs> yeah. know what i mean like just <laughs> depending on the night there's a there's a individual. how far away from the hotel are we to how okay. many drinks ratio and that also varies surprisingly enough math is fluid in our band so because we don't know how to do it well, we, we're not. So. We're <laughs> terrible. It's a math fluid is, concept to us. We don't know how it turns works. Another, yeah. another line I didn't think out here: math is fluid. Yeah, yeah. Really turns out none of us are mathematicians. No. So <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to shock anybody too bad. I feel like I'm going to scratch this next paragraph out yeah. of questions yeah. that I had. There you go. Uh, okay. Mathematics questions. Go can't ahead. Can't circle back around to that. <laughs> so yeah, so that's like we kind of try and figure out who's going to be. You know, and usually. It, it, Somebody has a night on, night off, and it's it's almost uh, it's kind of involuntary. You can't go you can't go strong every night. Not so anymore. It's not gonna happen. But if it ever happened, if a Casio's cut listener showed up at one of your shows, what should he approach you guys with after the show? Just to he should, what kind of what kind of liquor should he oh, approach? Oh, yeah, uh, that's what we're doing. And somebody's anything, not going to happen. Anything. Yeah. It, well, There's hope, 13 people and it's two of them. What I was going to say is if so. somebody does, first thing they should do is just shout out that this that's how they heard about it. You know, oh for God, sure. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll be very happy. Bird, right in the middle of your yeah. show. Yeah, and of then course. we'll play it in its entirety, <laughs> note for note. Be amazing. We'll learn it first and then we'll do it. The problem is they don't re- they don't realize we're going to be requesting free bird. I'm going to start doing that at shows just re- like free bird we'll in the mic. The reverse request. Reverse request. Oh, yeah. You're going to yell it to the crowd. Yeah. Like, Why don't y'all? Yeah, like, you assholes play free bird. See, it's like being from Alabama. When a band comes down, they feel obliged to mention Sweet Home Alabama. Oh, yeah. I'm sure yeah. that gets old. I bet they do. Uh, but, but it's weird. Like, it's like I'm kind of over it. Yeah. But then every time they hit those fucking notes, I'm like, Whee! yeah, like, something deep inside your core. Yeah. But yeah. also, like, how how depressed you are you? You just turn your hat they... backwards, like, yeah. 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 How, how depressed are you when they only hit the first like three or four chords, I know, right? and then they're like, they go into one of their songs? Yeah, yeah no, oh. no. If you're gonna hit it, fucking play, play it. it. Dude, let's, yeah. let's it's pretty cool. Money. When a couple of bands, I've seen that before. It's like then they do it note for note and just crush it. Yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah, that's what's up. That's, like, no, that's what I'm saying. If you play it, I'm do fine. It. Yeah, go, right. Down, down, I know, down. man. Hey, you want to hear one from the new record? No, yeah. no. no. we want to hear Skinner. Yeah. How about that? You done teased us. I, I really love the idea of bands. Just every band should just learn Freebird. 
right? And just have it in there. So, arsenal. like, if somebody yells it, can y'all jam it right now? No way. No, absolutely no. not. When's the last time you've played I have it? never played Freebird once in my whole life. Oh, I'm not good enough at oh, any oh, instrument. Fuck liquor. I need every Casio Scott Lester to yell out. Do you realize Freebird. how good that song is? Do you know how hard that yes, is? Yes, I know. Yes. I can't <laughs> do that. Like, yeah, Wait, I'm you the, see this? I know yeah. I do. I see okay. it. Okay, I'm the guitarist. It's like, you ever walked on the moon before? <laughs> no, I haven't walked on the moon. Like, what are you talking about? I can't play any of that shit. Yeah. Like the, I can listen to it. I just and came enjoy up here it. to Nashville. Yeah, because they announced last show, last tour. Yeah, oh, okay, which yeah. ironically is gonna last seven years. But you know how that is. Of course, yeah, it's yeah. the same yeah. tour. Yeah, followed by the final <laughs> final tour. <laughs> <or whatever. Yeah. laughs> it's the last tour. Yeah. Uh, but I went, and it was one of those things where you're like, Jesus. Yeah, dude, they're monsters. It's like I, classical music. Look, look, half of them, are, half of them are new dudes. Right. You know, because. What I, happened? I think, you're being, <laughs> you're being, I think we I think you're being generous with that. Ooh, I don't want to be too soon. Uh, <laughs> well, when I say new dudes, <laughs> well, Mr. Yeah. yeah, they're still been there forty years. <laughs> well, you know, like I would love to interview his brother who's singing now. Yeah, and go like still he's been in the band longer than Ronnie was. Oh, but dude, that's a. Like but you crazy still go, concept. you're the yeah. fucking new guy. That's really guy, funny, yeah. isn't it? He'll yeah, always dude. be the new guy. Like, he's what been there trip. 50 years now, and you're like, yeah, but you're the new guy. Yeah. You're like, no. Yeah, give it over to the rookie over here. <laughs> right, he's like, right. dude. <laughs> but, like, that's... It's true, yeah. I, that's a good and bad place to good be point. with the fucking band. That's right. pretty amazing. Oh, to think, God, yeah. I'm the new guy at 50 years. They yeah. still go... Yeah. yeah, but he's not the original. Yeah, he's when been getting hazed for 50 like, years by the rest of the All right, so like ACDC. Every, I mean, everybody knows Bon Scott, you know, the whole deal. Sure. But they still don't go, well, this is the new guy. Right. Like, that's the fucking lead singer you were... You, whoever you were, you know, older people go, hi, I remember when Bon I, Scott was there. I think the difference is, though, is that ACDC has had hits... Afterwards, yeah, after. yeah. After. Yeah. Like, and, like, that's the that's the the beauty of Skinner's music is like, you can have five, seven people on stage that have no affiliation no. with the original band. And it's still like the music's still there. Like it's still good. People are still going to be yeah, like, this is the greatest awesome. thing well, I've I have ever a, seen. I yeah. have a, I have a, I have a rule that I wish we would imply that all old bands, when you buy the ticket to their band, to their show, it should announce how many original members there are. I think that's a great rule. And then you get that much percentage off. Every time one of them dies. Oh, well, you're taking it to the next level, What's but this, I like I mean, the way you think. You know, like, if I'm going to see one Rolling Stone, I do not want to pay like $150 for a ticket. Right. Oh, I think, I I think all a, stones there. I think that's a $25 ticket maximum. All right, I'm in on that. So, like, <laughs> I'm not going to call them out, but there's bands that are touring with old bands' names. Sure. But there's literally no original members. Yeah. And they're all in their 30s. And you're like, guys, these albums came out in the 70s. You're all in your 30s. Right. This... We got an issue here. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody needs to not call you all the same band name. Uh huh. But still, when they hit those notes and go, oh, shit, that's my jam. Yeah. I'm going to sing. Still, and still you got me at this street festival. And, that, and that's the closest the you'll ever festival. get yeah, at the county <laughs> fair. Yeah, no, yeah you got like, me at the State no, Street I'm the not fair. I'm they're selling out arenas <laughs> yeah, now. Huh? Yeah. But that's the closest you're ever going to get to the original. So that's, yeah, what, that's people, what people are after. Like, all right, closest thing. Like, I mean, I know there's like, there's cover bands and tribute bands that are better than the original ever was. <laughs> like by leaps and bounds. But they call it mock rock. Did you know that? I did not. Mock rock. I like that. It's coming to Alabama. It's the first time I've ever seen the phrase. It's called the mock rock festival. So it's just it's just all tribute, tribute bands. bands. All right. I think it's a brilliant idea. I mean, if I'm if I'm gonna go see a band that's got half of an original member, I might as well go see a better version of a mock rock band. It's like they're younger, they got more energy. Yeah. It's like getting all your food from the, the generic brands at the grocery store. You're like, going to Aldi. I got some yeah. chocolate <laughs> vampire cereal. Like cool. <laughs> That's going to the little Debbies. You're yeah. going to yeah. I got buddy nutties. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Those are way down the list. It's like they call it like small Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I just noticed you have Leopard skin shoes on loafers. I do. Uh, well, those Tom Toms. <laughs> I do. No, they're not. There's they're some something like that. Yeah. Well, they're fucking badass. Thank you. I I was actually I played a show and the the people that are called Sabas. 
Sabas. Sabas shoes. They were at they, the show? They, it was, they, they were Sabas? Sp- yeah, they were sponsoring Why don't you it. have any Sabas, David? Um, he, he, I don't know. He didn't play the show. I know. I oh, need okay. some. They gave it to us. That's why. It was a, it was a, was it was, a gentleman's show? No, it was just a one-off thing. I got what did you say? You're, hired to play. How many side gigs do you have? I mean, a lot, but really. Are you okay with this, David? He's just he's putting his cock in any band ever. Oh, he can do whatever he wants. <laughs> oh, all right. We all got bills to pay, man. Yeah. So the yeah, Texas Gentleman is the other band. Just don't do it in front of me. No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. I, I love all those bands. I love I'm all. I'm not gonna them. watch you. I've watched. I've watched so many of all of them. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just, I, I mean, I play with a lot of different people and it used to be that the, the scheduling was so limited with every band that it was never a problem. Like we might be like between albums or something and we might take six months off. Well, if I have six months off. Like I'm not going to sit at home the whole time. All right. Um, but yeah, Texas Gentleman is a band that I play with. Uh, I play with my wife when I can. Her name's Brandy Zidane. And you know, I, when I mean, we both do this, like we play on people's records all the time sure. and, but yeah. So that's kind of a. Just a so, so let's talk. You got a. Uh, as the time of this recording, you're about to go on a huge tour. Mm-hmm. Um, talk about. Uh, I've had a few shots. Corrosion, conformity of corrosion, corrosion of corrosion conformity. Of conformity. Yeah. yeah. Oh, mighty, let me take one more shot. That'll I'll help. That. <laughs> yeah, that'll, that'll flip it back. Yeah. As the time of this. Uh, recording and airing, you're about to go on that tour. Uh-huh. And that is, where where is that going to be? Starting and ending. Ooh. Is it all you not U.S.? It's all you. This yeah. This first one Canada show. US. Yeah, that's right. One, one Canada yeah, show. One Ontario and, show. Sorry. You guys jam Canada a lot. We get up there. I, I keep a I keep a track of your tour yeah. schedule. Because you're just like, fuck Alabama. Well, so I'm like, you know, <laughs> well, you they're go, in Canada again. You go so far north and you have to go to Canada at some yeah, point. Get there. Go some yeah, point. Get there yeah, eventually. You're just there. And there's no wall. So there's no fuck wall. it. Let's there's go. A, Not <laughs> yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah Until they put one up to keep us all <laughs> yeah. out of there. I was going to say, I just saw uh, Tom Green doing stand You remember Tom Green? Oh, of course, oh, yeah. yeah. He just came to Huntsville doing stand-up comedy. And one of his jokes is, during the election of Trump, you know, he was he was on whatever Celebrity Apprentice with Trump. Oh, okay. oh wow. he was actually yeah. on that reality show. And he's like, I've been fired by your president. Yeah. Oh, that's and he's funny. like, everybody, when he's getting elected, is like, I'm moving to Canada. And they're like, fuck you. We're building a wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. It's like, y'all are our Mexico. <laughs> that's this yeah. great joke. I'm like, yeah, Canada don't want to fucking come up. Americans coming up here taking all our jobs. Yeah. They, got, yeah, exactly. they, got a, they got a lot of space yeah. up there. They don't want exactly. more houses. They got, <laughs> yeah. everyone, they're fine. They got they a got, great they got wide open country in yep. the whole middle but of the But corrosions, all right, you guys are you guys are both rock music, but they're a little different sound than you guys. I mean, they're, yeah, they're you guys metal, are having they're fun. Metal, you got yeah. funk, and they're like, we're voting with a bullet and fucking, you know, like yeah. tank corrosion. Like, they got those hard fucking. For sure. Like, yeah. Punch you in the. Fa- I feel like if I go to a corrosion show, I'm gonna get in a fight. You will. Or I'm gonna Absolutely. at least watch one. They, they guarantee it. You fact. guys sound like we're gonna have a fun time the whole time. How did you guys get hooked up with this? Because this is gonna be a fun tour. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know exactly how we did. I think that part of the thought process is that we've always had an issue recording records that sound like we do live. Okay. And I think I know a lot of bands have these the same issue, but. Um, like within the last few years and even, you know, with after and before releasing this most recent record, like we've kind of found our sound. QCNH is yes, the most uh-huh. record We've kind of found our sound just naturally getting heavier. And so live, like our live reputation is a little bit different than our recorded reputation. I don't think you know about them until you see them live. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah for the most part. I, yeah. uh, you can, you can I, there's bands where I'm like, eh, I'm just kind of, eh. Yeah. And then I go see them live. I'm like, I, I get it. I mean, it, it, I'm in. It goes both ways, right? You know, so you can hate them, yeah, live, yeah. But you could be like, F- what are y'all? Why are we getting excited for this? And you go see them live, and you're like, I got it. Yeah, I got it now. Well, I think our like we also have on every record. There's been one or two like strangely heavy songs. So f- to put together a live set, of- not on purpose. Just say it just happened that way. Yeah, certain yeah. songs. Yeah. Like I'll just write one one day that ends up being kind of a rock song or, you know, Sam will do the same, but yeah. And so like we have, you know, we have like a good 30, 45 minutes of very heavy tunes. Like we're not going to play the new record in its entirety. So course. on this tour, you're going to go, we're bringing our heavy shit. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. For sure. We're going we're we're to go try back. To bring I didn't know if it was like, fuck, we're going to sound total opposite. No, or we're going to kind no, of blend we, in. No, nah, I mean, we definitely want to just like 
have a great, you know, get a, our best rock set together. Yeah, because okay. you know, we're going to sound different. Throw it in there. Yeah, it's going to be different no matter what because they are they're like they're like a proper metal band. Yeah, and yeah, same, same thing with uh, with Crowbar, who's the other yeah the other band. kicking ass. Yeah, yeah like they are both a proper awesome. like you know metal band, and we like our metal is really like our heavy stoner rock stuff. Yeah, heavy stoner where it's blues like kind of yeah, stuff. it's like it's very. Some heavy. of your fans smoke weed. Oh, I've heard that. I can't okay. confirm yeah, or deny that. it. Okay. I've heard that but the, the, all the good ones do. You know, the ones in California. <laughs> yeah, the ones in California and Oregon Wait. and California and uh, Colorado, they all do. Shout out, because I, I promised I would do it, David Weatherford from Fort David Worth. Weatherford. Yeah, yeah, we talked about Dave earlier. Uh, David. We, did, we talked before we set the mics on. He was so excited when I started my podcast. He knew I loved you guys, and he said, you got to fucking talk to them. He's yeah. seen you guys. He's seen the gentleman. I heard it'll hey, you know, do the devil's lettuce a yeah. little bit. Uh, but a little jazz cigarette? Uh, jazz cigarette. Yeah. Electric lettuce is Electric one of my lettuce, favorite. Yeah, Electric good. lettuce. Yeah. Left-handed oh, cigarette? Also, uh, no, a, left-handed, yeah. yeah, of course. Also, I hope that David made it this far into the podcast. What if he listens to the first part and no name <laughs> drop and he turns it <laughs> <up? laughs> He like, just misses it. Bitch, you said, you said <laughs> He's already switched off. We got, we got the damn Carmen, and I didn't hear yeah. my name. Yeah, he got to Carmen, and he just skipped the whole thing. I'll go to the next episode. Yeah. I got to send a shout out to your original bands from when you were 15. Yeah. My, my name hasn't been spoken yet. Yeah. No, but he's from Fort Worth, and he's yeah. he was yeah, excited. Man, awesome. He followed me on Twitter and said, I know you, I know you like these guys. You got to have them on your pod. And I was like... Dude, I'd love to. At that time, we, I didn't know that your record label would, you know, would find me through Twitter. I mean, that's the, again the beauty of where yeah. we're at in 2019. But uh, so we, we're back to your stoner metal set. You're but, you're working your setup. You're you're we, trying to blend in with this crowd. Before we do that, I'm just gonna I'm gonna do a shot. I want you to oh, shot to okay. David right now. Here's to, to David. David. This is for you, David Weatherford in Fort he Worth. He sent Texas. me a picture of his Cheers, wife amigo. and you. Nice. And Kramer, right? Which one? Is he living in Fort Worth? David Daniel? Weatherford? Yeah. Yeah. David, uh, no, Dan Kramer, yeah. Yeah, Dan Kramer, yeah. He's in The Gentleman with you, he right? Is, yeah. Yeah, he said, David's like, hey, here's here's my dude. I met him before. He's a great guy. And yeah, that shot uh, was for said, you, buddy. fuck, I can't wait to hear this episode. David, no, are you done good. drinking? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. God, it's only fucking 8.30 a.m. I know. <laughs> I mean, if you brought that sausage, yeah, right. We if, promised, it 30, I mean, if it was eight thirty, if it was 8.30, we would have said about <laughs> one third. Sausage, right? We had some sausage right now. We might if it was eight thirty one, we would have said like one third of the things we we would all just be like, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Nah, man, well, that's like, cool. You know, well, what's, your favorite, what's your favorite? What's uh, your favorite? Little Debbie. Shout oh, milk like, cream uh, pie. Pancakes. I don't know. Pancakes. pancakes. <laughs> we need food right now. Pancakes so any, with chocolate. Anything from the Cracker Barrel Shout breakfast Shout out menu. to your record label and Logan yeah. for making yeah, this we happen. Love him. Logan's the best. Uh, he he hooked us up. All right, so a couple quick things and we'll get out of here. Because I wanted to ask you, we're in an age... We, I think you guys are close to my age. I'm, I just turned the four zero. We're close. We're getting yeah. July sixth. Yeah. Um, we used to live in the age when videos were the fucking jam. Yeah. If you didn't have a video, your fucking song wasn't gonna pop off. Sure. MTV era, and now it's weird. Now it's Jersey Shore, but yeah. you have. Two videos out for two of your songs that are pretty fucking spectacular at an age when videos are kind of lost in the shuffle. Uh, but you still got to have some of on YouTube, which is where kind of the videos live now. Sure. So I want to ask you about the two videos. They're both totally different, so kind of get your take on them. So if anybody's listening to this, Quaker City Nighthawks YouTube. First one is Mockingbird, yep. which is all animated. Mm -hmm. So... I've heard the story, but for listeners who are just now, if they want to check out Mockingbird, this is a wild fucking video.
give the idea for the animation or did no. the animation come afterwards? Yeah. What's happening? Charlie, the guy that did it, we pretty much did what we've done with Shout most of our... Shout out to Charlie. Yeah, yeah. man. He it's killed good it. fucking animation. It's, it's cool. Yep. And um, so we do what we do with most artists. Like we've, I don't think we've ever given any of the people that we've worked with any direction for okay. the most part. Like most of our record, uh, all of our records you are all the You just put them up on the YouTube dudes. as a song. Yeah, and then it blossoms into something. Is that? Is oh that no, no, no. We we got. The, well, I mean, we uh, got in contact with him, but I just mean as far as like ideas for the animation, we didn't give him any ideas. That was okay, all out yeah. of his head. So we just gave him the song. He spun it a few times and started kind of spitballing in his mind as to you, what he you, wanted. Do you guys to know this guy? We, no, we knew him through um, just like work. You know yeah. what I mean? Through okay, yeah. bands and him having done some other work. But we, yeah, we hadn't. We didn't know him until we met him. We've only met him once. Yeah, at South, at by. South by a couple years ago. South and, by uh, Southwest Festival. Yeah. Yes, we. Uh, yeah, he was just kind of like this is like we spoke to him, maybe emailed a few times. He's like, yeah, I kind of do this like '80s heavy metal style animation, and we met him, and this guy's like he's wild. He he showed up with a top hat and like. With like a, a vertebrae around it, like, <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, he was like, he was like, yeah, he, was he was like a steampunk like animal. Do yeah. we know if it's we, animal or yeah. human? I would assume we don't a little know. bit of both, human yeah. and animal. Yeah. He, he was like, he, yeah, yeah, it's yeah just kind of alternating. Okay. He was like a, it's a hybrid hat. Yeah, yeah he, was like, he was like a, 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 <laughs> it's like a voodoo voodoo king meets steampunk. Like yeah. the guy was, I mean, he was wild, and we're like, oh, well, cool, whatever you, whatever you show us, we're gonna like. And then he kind of he wrote a backstory before he started making the video. So there's an entire... To like, pitch to you guys? Yeah. and Like, so, here's what I'm thinking? Right. So if we ever want to revisit characters, like, he has a story and, like, has storyboarded out the whole thing and, like, this story of the, the Mockingbird King and, um, like, us going to a different planet and all these crazy things. And he just kind of showed us a few mock-ups and then we got, like, a final cut of the video and we're blown away. But, yeah, we, we had no, like... We just feel like if we want people to work with us and but, we hire people to work with us that we like, yeah, then they're gonna they're gonna listen to the music and come up with the with the idea. And again, that goes back to the good and the downside of where we're at in twenty nineteen. Mm-hmm. This guy's got your shit and can listen to it easily and go, Hey, I'm creative and I can do But it had nothing to do with the song that when it was originally written. Right? No, no, I wrote the song like five years before. Yeah, that's that what I'm saying. Like yeah. It just, it's, the video is like turned into something else. Right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a pretty amazing part I mean, of yeah, it. Like, yeah. I, man, I feel like sure. that anybody you hire to do something that works with your song or that is related to your song needs to, like, they're like another member of the band, essentially. Yeah. You know, where they are listening to what you've done and they're going to add their two cents to it. They're going to put their stamp on it. And for him, like, obviously, like, he's a really great animator. And that's what he heard. And he he looked at the like the, the concept art. You guys didn't tell him album. anything. No, no. Just let him go. We let yep. him go. And so he he found it, yeah. the story in the song and then interpreted it in that way and like looked at all of our artwork. That and the artwork for the last record was done by people that the same way. Like they got the record and then they did the artwork. That's so awesome. yeah, so he kind of he put a story together based on this artwork that was from someone else, like another member of the band so to say and then he became another member of the band and just went and took that into his medium and then um our aforementioned buddy david said you must ask him about the video of suit in the back which by the way is a i feel like that song is way different than a lot of songs you guys have did boy you gotta lose Something if you wanna live that way Boy, you got to lose Something if you wanna live that way Put up in the grass to stop the interstate To me, it doesn't feel that way, but I'm also, like you were talking about, I'm used to us, like each song All over being the board. pretty different. Yeah. yeah, so to me, I don't notice I mean, like that, that, but out, that doesn't mean it's not true. QCNH, like you're going from, I think it's morning, and then Colorado. Yeah. And Colorado yeah. is like way different than morning. And yeah. then we're going to a blues jam after that. Like, 
I, you know, I let my wife, who we call Big Booty Judy, on the podcast, like I let her listen. She's heard songs when I listen to them around the house, but I listen to the album complete. She's like, "Wait, is this the same band?" Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think that's a good and a bad thing. Like, it's totally, not a bad yeah. thing, but I think that's a that's a cool thing. Like, yeah. guys, you guys are all over the board, but like, so suit in the back is to me kind of sound. I mean, there's. I'm sure throughout your your album history, there's sure. songs that kind of sound like it. But off the new album, that one kind of pops in a different sound. Uh, so I've heard. I'm not going to tell you what I've heard, but I've heard theories based on what this song is really about. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Would you like to talk about what it's really about? And then the video, because the video has got some. We got a motorcycle guy. We got some counterfeit money. People are getting killed. Yeah. Just a There's day a lot of, of shit going on. Just a day video. in the life, you know. Yeah, a re- it's a re- it's a it's a, <laughs> it's a real life tale. Is that um, standard sh- Texas shot, procedure, shot, right? Shot there? For, yeah, shot, for some happened. people, that is. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a remake. It's a documentary, yeah. if you will. Yeah, yeah. yeah. drama. It's a dramatization. It's yeah. Really yeah. go on the History Channel right it's after really Forge and yeah. Fire. Drunk um, history. Sam wrote "Suit in the Back," so I don't really. I, I think he would definitely be a better person to ask about what it's about. But I feel like. I well, know if you for, don't know about it, then you don't know the theory. I know. Oh yeah, probably not. <laughs> but um, yeah, the, so the video was done by uh, Kilby and some other folks that were involved. But they kind of did the same thing, which was heard the song and just had that idea for that whole situation, and you know, shot it. And we do you actually, know the guy that's the motorcycle rider? We we met him, yeah, because yeah. we actually we met were, him, but you didn't know him beforehand. It wasn't like we we're we, get we our did buddy yeah, in the no, video. no no yeah like, they, he was in L A. and so we went out there to watch. You know, we just happened to be in Los Angeles for a day. And met up with them while they were doing that, and got to meet the whole crew. They oh, were doing cool. one of those uh, scenes like next door to the little apartment that one of our buddies lived in, and so we were just h- kind of hanging over just on the other side of where that shot, you know, the frame of that shot would have been, just watching them do all that. But um, yeah, that one was really cool. I, yeah, I, I think I that's mean, a really great. Like, video. Kilby's like an actual filmmaker. And yeah, so he's done some amazing we work. Had, we just had some friends that shout out if they want to find Kilby. Kilby's your boy. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Shout out if they want to find Kilby. Just. Kilby, do you know social um, media? If you go look, Google. if you go look on, here's how you do this, boys and girls. Go to our video on YouTube. There you oh, go. That's nice. go down there to the comment go. section, or not the comment section, but the, the info drop down bar, and we have uh, on YouTube all that you information. Can get linked in yeah, the YouTube. Yeah. linked in. Go to Quaker City Nighthawks. Go to Suit in the Back. Yes, sir. Uh, there. Here, you want to tell me? You want me to tell you the theory I heard? Okay, tell yeah, me the theory. Quote, quote. Ninety nine percent sure. Okay. Which, by the way, that means the one percent is what fucking came through because they're true, yeah. incorrect. Well, well, maybe not. We don't <laughs> no, no, I don't know is, the yeah. theory yet. No, well, you just told me what the song's about. No, I didn't. No, I said Sam wrote it. Sam I don't know what it. it's about. Yeah, but you would know. You ready? Ninety-nine percent <laughs> <right>. sure. <laughs> Suit in the back is about the guys in the band getting busted for THC oil in West Texas. Well, they didn't leave much room for error there. <laughs> what? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, you that's either incorrect. You knew that or you didn't. That's not true. Okay. That's fine. That's what we, <laughs> we shut down that theory. Wait, what's not, what's not true? The oil or the that's what the song is about? Or both? I don't know, man. Wink, wink. Yeah, right. Yeah. There's only a 1%, 1% There's only a one percent yeah. chance that's not true. If and the it's only the 1%. Not, yeah. Based on anything, I, I'll right? go ahead and tell you that I, to that my that song's not about it, correct? Let, let me tell you this: I didn't write the song, but I can tell you with ninety nine percent. Okay, lot truth, of ninety nine. That, that's definitely what that song's about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it definitely is. <laughs> You just said you didn't know, you dick. Well, dude, I thought, I, we were well, I thought you were going to say, I, I no, we listen. I thought you were going to say something like, like what's this song about? Be like, you took a motorcycle jump off of a canyon no, or something. I don't know what the hell you're going to say, you know? Like, no, but you claim and then you, you said it. Really it about. Just, well, I don't want to just lead with that. Like, but since you mentioned it, yes, that's what I'm trying to about. create fucking creative, interesting content. <laughs> and you getting busted with fucking DHC all is the best well, to, thing ever. To you, yeah. That's a real funny story when you're not I mean, the one on the other end. Yeah, It didn't happen. Yeah. Right? It didn't happen to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See your vape, man. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Uh, we were actually on our way, no matter what happened. Here's, here's the story. Here's no matter pause. What, yeah. Pause. Oh, oh, uh, uh. Take a shot of that. David, do you want to tell me the story about suit in the back? Yep. I'll, no. I'll, <laughs> okay. All right. Listen. <laughs> well, we figured out how to get that we in. We figured out how to work that in, right? Uh, David, um... <laughs> 
Was there some THC involved in sitting in the back? No. 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 Okay. All right, fine. One more time I'm going to ask. <laughs> Would you like to tell the story? All right, here's the story. I'll tell you the story. Yeah, we've had enough liquor. I like don't the way get, this Don't is get going. too excited. We're friends now. Um, so we were Nobody driving. Nobody listens to this fucking show. We were driving from Fort Worth <laughs> to Lubbock to um, open up a sold-out Chris Stapleton show. Yeah. And we were out Sounds in West great. Texas. He's about to come to Huntsville with Brent Cobb. That's what I heard. And, oh, Brent. Uh, love that guy. Somebody else that I fucking love. But Others. Yeah. yeah. Oh, y'all going to let me finish? No. <laughs> <laughs> For the last time. No. <laughs> no, we will not let you finish. Go ahead. All right. Well, I'll start at the top again. I've lost my no, place. No. Now. Yeah. We, so we, we were driving from Stapleton. We were driving from Fort Worth to Lubbock to open up a sold another out Another fucking Stapleton sold show. out show for the Quaker City Night. No, Fox. not another one. Probably one of the first ones. But um <laughs> so long story short, we didn't make it. So, Wait, you didn't make it? No, we didn't make it. What city? Do you remember what city you were supposed to end up in? Lubbock. Lubbock. Yeah. Okay. But what city did this all go down in? Uh, I don't know. Out on the highway, Texas highway eighty four, Texas. Yeah, there ain't no names for towns out there. Just, <laughs> how many west? How many buzzards there are on the power line? That's four buzzard east. towns. Oh, four buzzards over there. Okay, but yeah, we didn't make it. So that's the story. We were supposed to open a sold out hmm. show, and we didn't get to play. Why not? We got in trouble. We got oh. we got grounded. We got, you we get got hard grounded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did the hand. tour did the tour van get pulled over? Yeah, yeah. We didn't have our. So you didn't um, have your license? No, we didn't. Oh. Our uh, registration was out for the tag. That was it. That yeah. was it. for the trailer. For the trailer. On by the, the trailer. Way. Not even for the van. Oh, just for the. Trailer. So the moral of the story is: is make sure your tags are good. Make sure you're, <laughs> you got all your inspection. See, registration. you guys watch History Channel. I watch live PD. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I know it well. Yeah. Yeah. I know about that. And here's what I've learned from my PD. Check your fucking taillights and your car tag. That's right. You know what it reminds me of? They will pull you over in two seconds. It's Pulp Fiction whenever uh, Jules has that car. And he's like, (laughs) they're wondering if it's okay. He's like, you know, yeah. Like he's talking about how he keeps his shit all inspected and clean. Like, yeah, I'm not an idiot. On my PD or cops, cops are my favorite show growing up. (laughs) You're like. Bad boys. Yeah, thank you. You're like, guys. You've got 70 pounds of cocaine in the car. Let's go ahead and make sure the taillights work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, just how a, did we leave Mexico without a fucking tag just light? A, just a yep. quick check. Just, really goes really just walk around the vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. So. I realized this, too, from Live PD. The more cops that show up at the scene of the crime in blue jeans, the more fucked you are. <laughs> yeah, that's for Because they're undercover. Yeah, they're all yeah. undercover. They already know what you're fucked yeah, for. They're People coming to testify. They've been sitting around for days <laughs> not right. doing it's shit. It's probably your best friend who was really an undercover yeah. cop. My ex-girlfriend? No. All right. <laughs> so you mentioned, you mentioned, we're not getting married? <laughs> yeah. No, I was undercover the Denise, whole time. Denise, no. So you mentioned Stapleton, which yeah. is a great fucking tour to be on. Absolutely. We were... Sure. So sad. Did you to miss the show? Right, but you did more shows after that. We have not done any since then. Oh, that was the last. I don't know if it was no, the last, but it was. Like we, you know, we did because he made that one up at. Uh, yeah. in but San, you did tour in with San him. That was at the right. end of the yeah. tour. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there was, was just a one off. It was just a yeah. one, a single show. The tour yeah. was before that single oh, show, okay. and then okay. we did yeah. a couple of makeups afterwards. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but you did a whole tour with him. Yeah, great guy. Come on, Great shit guy. on Chris Stapleton. Let's no, go. Because he seems like the greatest human on the planet. I would love to, but I can't. He seems super fucking talented. He's, yep. Yeah. Immensely uh, talented and kind as the day is Come long. on. So our, nah, man, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you this. Our first, the first show we played with him was at a place. It was, it was Gas Monkey from the TV show. Uh, they have a venue in Dallas. They have two venues. And it was right before his, uh, right before he won all of the CMAs. Everything, yeah. Yeah, and then, and then obviously went on to win the Grammys and everything. And I I knew him from the Steel Drivers, but by name only. Like I didn't know oh, what he looked like. So good, the Steel Drivers. We're doing we're sound checking, and I see a guy back at the sound booth, like head banging, like going for it. Comes up on stage after we're done and says, "Oh, hey man, like out of breath." He's like, "Oh, hey, I'm Chris. Thanks for you know, thanks for opening these shows." Like, this like, is damn head like, This guy. is amazing. Yeah, and I found out that's Chris Stapleton. And wow. Then he we got up to the green room afterwards, and he had you know, handwritten note that just said, thanks for opening for us, had like a nice bottle of bookers and just like the absolute nicest guy. 
Like well, the, and, so and every he gave you bookers, I gave you Claude Mays. <laughs> hey man, I could have like bought it all. bookers. Well, if that's and, what you drink. I mean, you 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 bought two bottles though, so that's. Well, one of them's going to your record company. Well, he's never going to see yeah. that. Well, let's, let's drink it. Yeah, right. Let's drink sure that one. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, he was. Sorry, none left, Logan. <laughs> yeah. Every time we've, every time we've, it's just him and like his whole crew, like nicest dudes. Yep. Great it's people. one of the only times I've been asked after like a big show like that about my snare drum sound because they wanted to get they 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 liked it so much. They're like, wow. yeah, we're gonna try that out. Just you know, random stuff like he's that. He's got a great band of musicians. His oh, band the killer. is they like crush. top yeah. notch. Yeah, he's got the harmonica guy who's from Willie Nelson. Mickey Raphael. Yeah, yeah. Raphael crushes absolutely. Still a still guitar player who was off the charts. His, and, played with everybody, and his band's been with him forever. And that's his recording band too, which I think it's, is awesome. They're, fun, they're phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I remember hearing him and another beauty of Spotify. Mm-hmm. And streaming and whatever you want to think about. Sure. I discovered him through that and went, well, this, I don't want to knock on modern country, but it's yeah, okay. go let's ahead. knock on modern country. Yeah. You hear Stapleton. I mean, you're only in Nashville. What is... could go wrong? You know, you're only in Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> you're, <laughs> I'm just just in a <laughs> you're, you're, you're never going to make it out. <laughs> Let him rip. Fine. Yeah. Let her rip. No, but uh, no, I'm but just kidding. Specifically Stapleton. You're like, oh shit. The, for people our age, that's what country music was. Right. And you're like, it's not, not saying that the new shit is bad, but that's what we grew up on. Well, the like, record, the record that he wrote that won every award known to man was phenomenal. his, what's his giveaway songs. Yeah. Those were the songs that he either I kept know where to put them or nobody wanted. Johnson brothers, which is the rock. Have you heard that? I'm sure you've heard that. Album. I have, I have not really. I don't know who that is. No, that's him doing rock. I've not heard this. What's it called? Johnson Brothers. Johnson? Johnson, yes. Okay. Like Thompson, but with a J. <laughs> no, I'm not. Johnson, all right. Yeah. I, I'm, no, I'm, I like really? I like that. No, I've never heard I'm of it. I'm full unfamiliar with it. I'll check yeah. it out. Oh, check that out. Okay. Great. Is they it did new? one out. No, no, oh, no, okay. no, no. This is before before the. I'm doing Stapleton. The, the rise, yeah. Yes. Go check out. I, I heard it. I knew, the, I knew Steel Drivers as well. Yeah. But again, when he came out with that album... I didn't know that was quote unquote dude from Steel Drivers. Okay. I just heard it went, what's happening here? Because I like it. Yeah. And then you start, I started listening to older stuff. Yeah. And you go, oh, Steel Drivers guy. No wonder. He fucking sounds well, I'll great. Tell you, I'll tell you another thing that happened that night. And I, I, it's, I've kind of forgotten about it until right now, but that it was pouring rain that night. And they did something that was almost unheard of. Is like the headliner was like, no, let's like push the opening band back. Because they were having trouble getting everybody in, really, and we we ended up starting that show I think fifteen late, yeah, fifteen minutes late. Usually it's just leave you out to drop, exactly. yeah, or yeah. just you know no, you, you no go concern, when you're supposed really. to start. Yeah. And they they ask if we would push the show because not enough people had made it in because it was like crazy weather yet. Did you see you guys see going on a tour? And I'll the next one is one of my favorite bands of all time, but. Stapleton is a huge tour, of course. So you take that going, we're going to get in front of a lot of fucking people. Yeah. And I always like to see the opening band. Being a being a guy that I love music, I'm on a rock station now. If I go to a concert, the, the goal is what time does the first band go on so we can make sure we see that band. Sure. And it doesn't matter if there's three, four, two, whatever. There's a reason they're opening up for them because that usually means that usually yeah sometimes there's politics record label whatever but usually the headliner goes I fucking like these guys yeah and I I want to travel with people that I like and music that I like so you guys going on tour with Staple did you guys see like is there a, a visible effect of we're going on tour with them that leads to new people can you can you guys quantify that as a band um the easiest way to quantify it is just at shows yeah. you know based off of merchandise sales how many records vinyl we sold and, and that, that those kind of metrics but um yeah and then i'm sure there's and online so stuff after that. Oh, yeah. oh yeah yeah you're, all that and you're going oh, like yeah. oh it's, shit it's yeah. foolproof you'll, you'll, you know yeah. pretty much meaning you'll meet people down the, the road 10 years later that saw you with somebody and yeah, they'll remember that sure. time and they might maybe they're coming to see you at a headlining show but they'll kind of call back to whenever uh, yeah. they saw you with. They had you know, to get introduced. They, yeah, which is great. Like we're super grateful for that because that's really the only way that you're gonna 
that a band of our size is going to make it to the next rung in the ladder. Like you have to have somebody that believes in you and kind of champions the cause and all that. So another one is Blackberry Smoke, who I think is Mm -hmm. one of the, one of my favorite bands of all time. Yeah. I I think there's a new genre that's not being, uh, maybe catered to or paying attention to. And it's new quote unquote, Southern rock, which used to be a jam back in the day, of course. And I think it kind of went, kind of got some stereotypes and went away for a while. And then it's now like, we don't know what to label it. Is it country? Is it rock? Right. Or And you guys are, like I said, you've, you you guys are all over the board. And you got a Texas sound to you. And I'm sure you guys are, Texas rock was a, you know, Texas blues is its own. You guys like being Texas. And I don't say that as a knock, but that, it's you know true, what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's a sound is the Texas sound. Yeah. Whether you're rock or country or whatever, there's still a, genre under that of we're texas rock we're texas country we're texas blues or whatever the next band i'll bring up is blackberry smoke who's one of my favorite bands of all time um and you guys did a huge tour with those guys did you know them beforehand how did you get on that what's happening let me fill me in on all that good stuff we we played with them years you know throughout the last four or five years we've done a few little runs with them and a couple shows with them and then we did a pretty long was it a few weeks, something like that, stateside I mean, was, tour, and then we had a, yeah. a, a like a very small break, and then we went over to Europe with them for over a month, I think like five weeks or something like that. So we knew them from, you know, um, doing those kind of smaller shows, like one-off shows with them, but you really don't get to see a band. You know, a lot of times you can do a couple of those and not even meet the guys. Yeah. But when we did that many in a row, and then also the ones in Europe, we got to where we kind of, you know, would all hang out and talk a little bit and you know you just get to know them a little better because like, of proximity you know because if you're the only americans within 300 miles of a place you end up shooting the shit you know ask you this for, you go on, for casual guy listening you guys are on a europe tour are they is this a how did you guys get with that are they are they fans of yours and goes, you know what, we want these guys on the tour? Is this a record label? Their deal? management. Did you know any? Okay. Yeah, it was their management. And but still, they've got to go, yes, we right. want them on the tour. Yes, uh, uh-huh, for it. sure. Yeah. They 100% a, did. Whatever you want to send with us. Yeah. Take. yeah. I feel like Europe is the next level of, like you said, mm-hmm. we're going to be with these fucking guys. Yeah, man. For months. Yeah. In, in and it's only going to be the only few Americans. Yeah, for sure. But it was great, man. And. So we got to know them pretty well over the course of that. You know, I think we've hung out with them on those couple runs as much as we've hung out with any other band in the past when we've been in those situations. But, yeah, they're outstanding, man. They put on a really great show. And the thing that you, is crazy to see that I loved was their their fan base in Europe. Like, that's a really interesting thing to get to see for any band. But especially with those guys, it was, it was pretty wild. Like, they have a rabid fan base in Europe. Like, those people came out and just tore those venues to the ground, drink you know, every, like drink every just drink every had, drink yeah. in there and then just leave like, like a hurricane had blown through. And that's well, what you want, you talk know, about it before we recorded, but another one of my favorite bands is Blackstone Cherry. And they've, you know, knowing those guys personally. And if you look at their tour schedule, they're doing huge rooms and stadiums or whatever you want to call it over yeah. in Europe. And then they come over to America, and sometimes there's cities where it's a 800 cap room and they don't sell out. But you see, like, it almost seems like Europe appreciates rock music more. Is that a thing, or is that a? I mean, what what what's your take on Europe and and appreciating American rock? It's, it's definitely a thing. Like, I yeah. mean, you can even look back and a lot of like the the pop bands and the rock bands in the last 20 years, like they broke in Europe. They were yeah. popular. Like we were talking about the Killers earlier. That's a great example. They were a hit in Europe when they were playing seven hundred and fifty thousand cap rooms. Here I think in you just did an interview about it, but before is why I kind of wanted to go solo. Like, yeah, we we're smashing it. Why can't we smash it here? Right. I mean, it's just it's the a lot of it has to do with just the 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 radio marketing and the way that the like America is set up for singles. Like they want like. They don't want an album. Quote, unquote, radio hits. Right, yeah. yeah. You know, they want, like, like if you look now, like, the thing is, like, everybody's putting out EPs constantly. Well, it's because, like, yeah, if you have an EP, most likely you could make a record, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. So, in, but in Europe, people buy records, and they want to listen to it from song one to song 12. 
and they want to read the liner notes and they do the thing that people used to do in the States in the 70s and 80s. I think it's what you appreciate about vinyl back yeah. in the day is we got pictures, we got a story to it's, tell, we got they, the whole deal. They care about the artwork, they care yeah. about the, the t-shirts, they care about everything that's going on. And in the States, they might just, you know, you might be popular and that's why your song is good. You might not have a great song, you might just be a well-known person. And so, yeah, Europe is just a... It's just a different animal, and it's great because without Europe, a lot of American bands that are not maybe as popular as you think they are, or you know you, they should be, they're going to Europe, and that's where they're making enough money to survive and come back over to the states and play. It's wild. Now, you guys went on a European tour with Blackberry Smoke, and like you said, that's where you saw their crowds. But you can see already from that tour residual effects of we're going back to Europe. We're going to do our own headlining tour now. And you can see the effects of, hey, we went over there with the smoke, right? Yes, for sure. And I guarantee you that when we go over there that there'll be a pretty fair number of folks that come out to the shows who that will have been where they saw us. You know, right. the only yeah. other time they will have yeah. seen us because that's the only time we've ever been over there. But, yeah, it definitely has a ripple effect. And the cool thing about bands that are in positions like those guys are is, you know, I, I feel like they understand – how they can help people, like how much they yeah. can help people. I think they're fully aware of that. And then they choose to do it, you know, as a favor to people. And that's really kind. And that's really, you know, really cool. Because they know that if they take a band over there and the band doesn't blow it for themselves, like they play well, that they're going to have that opportunity. So in a certain way, I feel like they knowingly kind of set certain guys up, you know, to to be able to do their best in some of those situations. And that's a cool they, thing. They want to see. They do, off. man, and that's really cool. Somebody did that to them. Yeah, exactly. They learned it from yeah, somebody else, and it's a great culture. Yeah. You know, you it's cool. Ask, you can ask Charlie, and he, I guarantee you, can tell you <laughs> the people that that brought them over there. You know, twenty five years ago, twenty years ago, and we're like, hey, come over and do this opening slot for us, and yeah. that's yeah, that's the beauty of like like this like you saying like the Southern rock and the Texas rock and the even the the world of country is that people tend to have longer memories yeah. and you know that you were given a great opportunity and you're not going to waste that. Like you're going to give it to somebody hopefully that's going to do something with it because it makes you look good. Like if you, if you are able to help break a band or help, you know, like somebody's career excel. Yeah. It's good for everybody. Any fun Blackberry Smoke stories? And I'm trying to think and of anything that comes back top of mind. I'm trying to think of any specific. I mean, I am too. Yeah, they were. You know, it's it's. Are they pranksters? They're, I've they're, heard of being on tour. There's some kind of bands that are pranksters. They're putting cheese in your microphone. They, they, <laughs> not, they, they, no, I don't think we saw know, any of that with those guys. The biggest thing with that tour is like they were on a bus and we were in a van, so they would leave every night to go to the next city because they're is they, the van faster i feel like the van's faster the van's faster but you if can't you can, if you can drive, drive all night all the time oh you know, yeah because you know, you're like, rotating drivers yeah well, they yeah, leave and then got, we, we got to wake up the next morning they and got drive. a bus yeah. driver yeah. they right. went overnight so they, you yeah. know like if we have to be there at five they've been there since 9 a.m right. sitting on a parking lot so it wasn't really so much like anything crazy just it was nice to actually get to hang out with them and you know we always we generally had meals together like we have like dinner together almost every night at, at the venue at the yeah venue and and just you know the different guys being able to hang out and um what's been you know it's cool for me especially living in nashville like i see a lot of these guys at different events and everything and they're like we know each other which is really cool like i was at a thing a few months ago and charlie was there and you know we were backstage and he's hollering at me from across the stage you know across, uh, across backstage and we're hanging out and it's just yeah it's just nice to actually get to be able to know these guys that are you know rock stars in certain parts right. of the world and just they're just regular normal people and just happy that you're doing good and you're happy they're doing good and yeah all right quaker city nighthawks guys david aaron thank you guys dude guys thank you good. really appreciate it man that we, was a blast oh, for yeah. sure we almost got to half the bottle we'll do that before <laughs> we leave all right uh uh, just because you never know when somebody's listening to this podcast, where can they guys find you guys? Where can they find your tour schedule? All that. Where can they keep up with Quaker City Nighthawks? Sure, we're on uh, Instagram and all that stuff under QCNH, and um, the actual website, the URL is uh, just the Quaker City Nighthawks dot com. That'll have all the photos and tour info and uh, 
links to merch and all that kind of stuff. In 2019, what's the best way to support a band? Go to the show, buy merch. What, what do we send do? them? Send them cash. Just. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, just in an envelope, that. Like, tor- that. twenty dollar bill, just You'll right on there. For these bigger jobs, yeah. yeah. Go go to shows and buy merch. Yeah, That's for sure. I mean, go merch. To shows I mean, merch. like you guys, when you do a show now, do you sell CDs? Yeah, we sell CDs and vinyl. I mean, but are people buying them? What, what's happening? Yeah. Tell me the tell me the lay of land on twenty nineteen. Blackberry smoke shows. We sell CDs. Europe, okay. Europe. We sell. He sub CDs. CDs. Like we'll sell. It's it's ten to one CDs to vinyl. Really? Yeah. Oh, all the, all day long. Yeah. And in the states, it might flip. Nothing. Or no, vinyl. it might be vinyl, vinyl to be cool. But, but yeah, the Blackberry Smoke fans specifically like they buy CDs. Um, but we sell a lot of vinyl. Like the amount of vinyl we sell has, I'd say, in the last decade is probably. But is is merch a bigger seller than than any of the music stuff? What is it in 2019? Uh, no, no. Even? Uh, it's Herbie. yeah. It just you know the problem is is they can each one can vary, but if you took the average of them, I bet they're pretty. Um, I think pretty the even? merch is a little less, but it's definitely a huge part of the yeah. of the bottom line. And you it's know? really like if you're if you're just going to go out and support a band, like buy their stuff because that's where they're going to make the most money. Yeah, you know, like it's no, great. It's, yeah, it's, it's, especially it's, opening bands. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, big the, time. most of the time you lose money on a tour, right? If you're the opening guy, I mean, you, there's some different situations, but you're either you're figuring out how to clear money through this tour because yeah. basically you're doing it for exposure, totally, right? Yeah. So when the, you see them, the best thing you can do is like, man, I had a fucking good time with that show. Buy yeah. a fucking shirt. Yeah. Buy if a you, fucking CD. If, buy a vinyl. Whatever you, it is. If you actually like the music, buy the music. Right. And if you don't, don't. Just tell people that. Like, don't tell the band that. That's cool that you got to shake hands with the band and everything. But, like, you know, buy even buy a koozie, buy a pen, buy, spend five bucks. Yeah. That's it. Buy one less drink, buy a koozie. You'll be fine. You'll help support the band. What if I buy the drink and then the merch? Oh, man. I don't no, want to buy one less drink. If you if you show up with a tray of shots and then you buy some <laughs> records, man, you we, we will not forget you. I'll tell you that much. And then bring some Star Crunch or yep. Christmas trees. Christmas, Christmas zebra trees. cakes. Yeah. And zebra cakes. Christmas You're in the money. <laughs> Guys, thank you. I've had a blast. Awesome. Yeah, Thanks peace. again, Kessie. Absolute phenomenal Appreciate time. It, man. Guys, will you do my podcast again? No. All right, fine. <laughs> fine. Okay, fine. <laughs> That's how it is. That was Sam chiming in. Yeah, thank thanks, you. Sam. Thank you guys. Go check them out. Quaker City Nighthawks. Thanks for listening to Cassio's Cut. Want to hear more of Casio in between podcast episodes? You can listen to the Jimbo and Casio Morning Show live 6 to 10 a.m. Central on the Rocket951.com. A guy was in Ludington, Michigan, grilling some chicken a few years ago. Okay. When he got back, one of the pieces of his chicken was missing off his grill. Our guy Tyrone Gardner, he was pretty sure his neighbor stole that piece of chicken. What? Yeah. Started running over to the guy's house. He grabbed a tool that I didn't even know we had anymore. <laughs> he grabbed his pitchfork and stabbed the guy with it. I feel like if you've got a pitchfork, somebody has stole your chicken or you're chasing an evil doctor out of town. <laughs> Pitchfork's brutal. It hurts. It's brutal. You're getting multiple stabs. Long Four long tines that are sharp at the end. you got to pick hay up with them. I did not see Tyrone pulling out a pitchfork. Seriously, who uses a pitchfork? If your name's not Jedediah or Beelzebub. <laughs> Listen live online or download the Rocket app for your tablet or smartphone. Just search WRTT Rocket 95.1 in the Apple or Google Play Store.